What is going on, man? Oh, man. It's Thursday. Wish it was Friday. Not even going to lie to you. Whew. What's up, people? What's cracking? Let me turn this down a little bit. Been playing a lot of hip hop. Put the trap music on hold for a little bit. You know what I mean? Been getting in roots with my hip hop. What up with everybody? How's everyone doing tonight? Shot there in one of the comments. Nice and early. Nobi's Reptiles. It's my little girl right there. She's tight. It's my homie. Ball Pythons 101. Chris, first OG in the comments. Appreciate you. What up, Wiz Constrictors? How you doing, man? Man, it's, it's good to be here, man. Feels good, you know. Uh, before we get started, please, if you support this channel in any way, if you like who I got bringing on and who's going to come on, you know, subscribe to the channel. You know, hit a like, hit a dislike, do something. Just don't be ghosts and stuff, you know. Give me something. That's all I want. Um, before we get started, everyone, um, I want to just throw this out there. Um, this, this, today's podcast, this, this episode is for the guest. Okay. So I appreciate in the comments, please disregard anything. Don't ask me anything about what previously happened, uh, to one of my best friends, Forrest Fanning. I just want to keep this completely just trap talk with Ozzy. Uh, that's what it's all about. Please. Um, we will have our, our episode to the, to him, to our, to my falling brother. Um, Ah, it's hard to even deal with, man, but I'm excited for tonight. First and foremost, um, somebody who I've been looking up to since day one, I came across him, one of the top three dudes. I started just like going ballistic, liking things and whatnot, you know, so we're going to bring him on right now. Big heavy hitter. But before we get started, um, if anyone who's watching this, listening to this, um, just want to go ahead and just do a moment of silence for a little bit for Forrest Fanning before we get started or anything. All right. So. Just please moment to sign from a man forced. <sighs> my boy. All right, let's do it. What's good? Trap talk session. It's Thursday. I'm going to make this feel like it's a Friday because I'm pumped up. We got something amazing going on. Uh, Ozzy motherfucking boys in the motherfucking building. What is good, Ozzy? Yo, yo, what's up, bro? How you doing? There he is. There's the champ, OD champ. I can't tell, man. I'm so excited to have you here right now, bro. What is what is happening on your end? Thanks for having me, man. I just want to um, give my condolences to Forrest Fannin's family. Um, real sad news. Um, but yeah, but just here, man, plugging away, you know, just uh, doing my thing. Thanks for having me. Big time. And um, yeah, man. So Ozzy, man, let's just let's just put it out there, man. You are you're probably one of the most well known dudes who don't even really put himself out there that much. Like you're not let's face it, you're not all on your stories. You're not like, you know what I mean? The marketing as far as what a lot of people do out there, just to even get a following, is not something you have to do much, right? Just because I mean, from what I know, man, you you are well established in the projects you do before even social media was a thing. Like this was, I mean, this has pretty much been in your backyard for how, how long would you say now? Like, let's be honest. How long have you been carrying this name that you've been carrying for so long? Well, well it's, it's been about 20 years now. Um, and I, you know, I, I really don't like putting myself out there. I'm kind of low key, you know, I'm, uh, I'm definitely not somebody who puts their personal, you know, uh, business out on social media is just not my style. Um, 
the whole snake thing, you know, it, it's, you know, Ozzy Boyd's is just a product of, you know, my passion, you know, right. so it's really, the, it's really the snakes that put me on the map. Um, okay. Just the real cool combos. It was no special effort, you know, um, on my part. Right. So, I mean, what's crazy is, you know, <laughs> You don't even have sick ass ball pythons, bro. Your boas are ridiculous, man. So, like the boas, right? When did so? What came first, the boas or the ball pythons? Like, what what was well, it? Well, I I used to have snakes when I was a kid. I had boas. I had a boa when I was a kid. Um, and when I got back into the hobby, I was looking for a small constrictor. So I got a couple of normal ball pythons first. Nice. And then, and then I started, you know, doing research and I got exposed to all of the morphs and the mutations. And my first morph was um, a call strain albino boa wow. that I bought from Pete Call. So that's why, yeah, you'll see, you know, I specialize in ball pythons, but you'll see my logo. The one you, uh, the one I sent you has an albino boa on there. And that, you know, that originated, right. you know, that was my first morph essentially. So that's why you see that on my logo. Yeah, so that's all that always stood out to me too because I mean, as much as you like are well known for your ball pythons, man, your boas are just as hard, bro. And uh, yeah, I've always it, had I've always had a handful of boas, you know, but you know, the good. ball pythons are just um, the boas are crazy now too. But but back then, when I really started getting heavy into the ball pythons, there were just there were more mutations and more colors and patterns to work with. Um, since, you know, since that time, there's been a lot of new boa morphs popping up. So I have yeah. a few boas. I have a few boa projects. I, I had a, one of my favorite females slugged, um, yesterday morning, but yeah. you know, boas are tough, man. They'll humble you. No, for reals. And, uh, you know, what's funny is, uh, well, it's not really funny, but here I am on my second year pairing two boas that I've been raising for the past four and a half years. I mean, I want to say almost about four and a half years since I started, I, I inquired, you know, some, a couple pairs are really nice. Well, three boas, but anyways, it's a female and a male that's ready. Uh, last year I paired them up and everything dialed in perfectly. The male just wanted nothing to do with her. Like he would just yeah. go on the opposite side. Right. And I was talking to my boy who gave, who saw me, but he's like, yo, he just ain't ready. He just doesn't want nothing to do with her. Yeah. And then this year I, I do the same thing. I pair them up and the dude locks, right? Dude locks. And then I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And then next thing you know, I just see them very, very active, right? So long story short, bro, I was fucking up and had their temperature way too hot. Their temperature was like 89 or like, I don't know. But there was, I just knew it was way warmer than they were supposed to be in there. And they just weren't comfortable. And it would, just wasn't going to go down. And I didn't catch that till like, I don't know, fucking a week ago or something like that. So in either, either way, it's not like you do that about pythons, bro. You're still going to get eggs more likely. You know what I mean? Like it's... Well. it's you you could you could, you could you could get slugs with um you could no yeah right times if your room is too hot i mean 89 you know 89 hot spot but if you got your room at 89 you're probably gonna get a lot of slugs yeah that's not good i always i try to keep my room no you know it always stays you know no hotter than 80 in my room and that's yeah. even in the summertime and then i'll let it naturally drop down to like you know 70 like you know no colder than 77 76 but it doesn't really you know it's good to have some sort of a natural drop but like you said you can't have a hot spot and then have a room that's almost as hot as your hot spot because that's you cook yeah. that's that's an oven you know what i mean that don't make sense so um it, all right ozzy so go ahead basically the sperm is very sensitive to heat um so you know the male will deposit the sperm sac in a female but then the heat will kill the sperm so when the female ovulates the eggs will be infertile and that's how you get slugs. Right. So you gotta, you know, sperm is very, very heat, heat labile, very sensitive to heat. That's right. why you gotta keep your room um, cool. And that's why the females lay cold. Right, just exactly. Right ovulating. And then as soon as they ovulate, they start laying the heat. Yeah, because the eggs are already in them. So they just, yep, that makes yep. a lot of sense. So that's definitely something to write down if you guys are kind of new in this game and or you know had a year where everything was locking but you got no results you might want to check your temps you know what i mean that's yeah. something that yeah. you might be working your sperm and you don't even know it so yeah. um keep keep an eye on that man that's a huge tip looking out on that ozzy but um jack jack's want to say what's up Rep oh this dude man. okay so the german pointer yeah. what's, his full, <laughs> what's his uh what's his full genetics what what is a what, what kind of hunting uh, dog is that? german german short hair pointer yeah, yeah oh, dog, my, man. great dog. that is 
one of the most nicest dogs I've okay. I had a roommate who had one of the um wired hair, or it was the ones with the high the hairs with like gray and it was like more ridgeback. The red, yeah, red, yeah. ridgeback, exactly. So Asian ridgeback, yeah. yeah, man. He and this guy literally that's all the kind of dog he wanted. He was a hunter, so it's crazy how natural these dogs point. Like they just they're born to point. Like they're they're uh it's amazing. And uh man, you've had Jax for going on easy two now. How old is Jax? Three. Um, yeah, I think, I think he's, uh, two and a half going on three, It'd be three in July. I mean, I like Jax a lot. And then you have the other, you have two dogs. You have Jax and the other dog, right? Nah, nah, just Jax. Oh, you've always had just Jax. What other, what other pet do you have? I know yeah, there's I, another. I had a wine runner before, but he passed away. Yeah. Um, right. And then I got Jax. I think he passed away in 2000, um, 2017. Okay, damn. It's always tough losing a pet, man. It's like losing a kid. Yeah. It's, not, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. terrible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but okay, so why do why do you choose to have a dog like like Jax? Because it's like it's that's a unique dog to want to to want, you know, you gotta have some sort of a I don't know what it is, but that's just not a normal dog people pick to have, even though I I mean if I could I would, but I'm more of a pit. Like, but, yeah, I like I, I fell in love with um the wine runners, and so I picked up a wine. My arm, he was pretty. He was pretty big, so I just wanted something a little bit smaller. And I yeah. like bird dogs, you know. I, I like bird dogs. I like, you know, hounds. So that's why I, you know, decided to go with the German Short Hair Pointer. It's actually my daughter's dog. I wasn't gonna get another dog. I was done, man. I was, you know, heartbroken, and I had to put my my boy Bugs down. Right. And, you know, but my daughter, man, she she loves dogs. So yeah, yeah I think it was her. It was her uh, ninth birthday, um, <clears throat> so I surprised her with a puppy. Okay, there you go. I mean, you you want to make a kid happy? Give him a puppy for sure, yeah, and especially yeah. dog like Jax. Man, Jax is such a cool dog. Um, no doubt. How's Jax do with the snakes? Oh, he's good. He's good with the snakes. He's he's terrible with the rodents. I mean, oh yeah, that's yeah they, hit, they hit the ground. They're Stand done. Side. Yeah, they're done. One, one one twerk and it's done. It's just one. Yeah, he's yeah, he's he's how, how did he, too, man. How did he kill him? Does he just jerk him? Does he like break the neck or does he like actually chew him to pieces? Nah, he, he'll chew him. He'll he'll. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, have you seen have you seen that thing on YouTube? The meat. Have you seen that thing? You you good? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I, hear you. I was looking right, at so the comments that. over there. Oh, okay. Have you uh have you yeah let's roll. Have you actually seen on YouTube, Ozzy, that that mink hunter? He has like uh he has minks that go to like farms and hunt rats, nah, and he just and yeah, yeah, minks are no joke. If you want to just be entertained, bro, watch one of those videos, man. He it's no joke what they do to these yeah. rats. They have like a pile of rats that these minks murk, and it's nuts, bro. And they, they they don't just go easy on them too, so it's pretty it's pretty raw, man. Um, so back to your snakes. All right. So you, all right. You live in Maryland, right? That's where you reside at, right? Yep, right outside of DC. Right outside, right outside, right outside of DC. <laughs> my mom used to, my mom used to live in Annapolis. Uh, so I, I know how beautiful yeah, yeah. that. Was. Yeah, yeah. I know. So it's, not, it. it's not far, not far from me at all. Probably about forty minutes, no traffic. Right. So <clears throat> you deal with some real weather back there. Like you have real seasons. You don't, you know. So yeah, like we have, yeah, we have seasons. Yeah, but it doesn't get right. too cold. Oh, nope. all right. So, is your is your collection in a facility or is it in your house? How close do you? How close are you to your collection? Oh, I got it in my house now. So I had to wear I had to warehouse and all of that, but you know I hated that, man. I, so I'm back to being a basement breeder, a uh, basement breeder, and um, that's when, simple. That's when I'm my happiest, man. I feel you, man. I don't. I really don't see myself having this collection to where I have to drive to it because it would just give me so yeah. much stress. I I'm the, I, I have like I sporadically have feelings that something is like needs my attention in the snake room, and I'll go. And sure enough, there'll either be a, yeah. a loose snake or something. But I just need to I just need to be that close. I need to be yeah. steps away. Uh, but you know, that's why I hope so. So you know, someday, thankfully, I live on property where I could expand. But I don't think I could. You know, knock on wood. If I do, I ha I do. But I, I just can't see myself being in a warehouse and having to leave my home and. Yeah. I don't know. Do we, do we you got to do you. It's it's you yeah. know some yeah. people some people thrive in that situation, right? Um, yeah, it's not it's not for me. Um, 
I think one of your biggest fans is in the comments right now, always evolving pythons. You know who that guy is? <laughs> yeah, Miguel. What's up, Miguel? Yeah, Miguel's in here. He only chimes in when the real people, like the real, real big dogs are in here. So, AKA, this is his first time being in here. So, uh, yeah. shout Ron, to Miguel. Ron, I mean, Ron Compton was asking if I work with dwarf boas. I'm definitely working with some leopard and some blood uh, boas. So, I do yeah. have some dwarf stuff going on. Awesome. Sure. So, the bloods are dwarfs, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. The blood boas. Yep. So how big would that like what's the average size you feel like a male would get and a female would get? I don't know, man. I, you can I have them. they vary because I'm I'm plugging some um Colombian blood into them. Okay. So I have them where they where they kind of vary. Some of them get kind of big, but some of them stay pretty small. Um, you know, females like you know, five feet, four and a half feet, males three. <laughs> Three and a half feet. So let me, yeah. let me let me ask you this. What's their attitude like? <laughs> oh, mine are chill. Are they? Yeah. Man, they're chill. I don't know why the smaller they are, the more crazier they are. I don't know why yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, I've had that experience. But the ones that I'm working with right now, they're actually um they, they were a little feisty when they were young, but as adults now, they're pretty cool. You know, I handle them all the time. I think that's I think that's kind of typical with any snake for the most part. If you like raise them, you Typically, you know, you know, you handle them on on occasion on when needed. They'll, for the most part, grow out of it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had some crazy psychotic snakes just go from that point to just okay, they they're alert, but they're not just trying to kill you anymore. They know what's yeah. up. You know, what I mean, they they almost know the hand that feeds them at some point. You know, um, okay. so yeah, you know, um, I don't know why Ozzy, but I feel like you'd be some sort of an arboreal dude, man. I see you like because you know, I I don't know you Bro. you got. You got taste. I don't. I just feel like you'd be at least into at least one emerald project or a condo look, project. Look, I like, <laughs> I like all of that stuff. I, you know, I, I, I'm serious. Like I've had green tree pythons um, when I had the store. Right. And that was part of the reason why I did the reptile store is because I wanted to play around with a lot of different species. And um, mm. I mean, I love it all, man. I love retics. I love blood pythons. You know, I love hog nose. Um, right. but, Early on, I, I realized that um, it would be better for me to focus, you know, on one species, and I kind of compromised by doing two with the with the boas and the ball pythons. But I right. try to stay focused and I try to stay disciplined. Um, you know, I, I just I, I don't want to have a room full of, you know, twenty different. Species. I just wanted to get be really really good at one thing. So. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm focused on the ball pythons. I think that kind of comes with, you know, I'm not gonna lie, Ozzy. I think my first year I ended up okay. Well, I went from having like when I was like, okay, I want to breed snakes, it was all about ball pythons. And then I ran, you know, <laughs> ran into people on Facebook, got homies, got, got good friends with good importers. Next thing you know, I'm working with 11 different yeah. species. Yeah, it exactly. was all too much. And honestly, that was the only point, Ozzy, where I would go in in the mornings. And go to my snake room and deal with so much different crap. Like, it, I literally, that's when I was like, what the F am I doing, man? Like, I'm tired of this. Yeah. And until I started deleting, I started deleting certain things. Like, okay, do I really, is it at the, it doesn't matter that I really keep this and breed this. I started getting like really like actual, like practical with myself. And, uh, you know, I ended up getting half that down. You know, I still work with a good group of species, uh, but it's more stuff that I'm dialed in with, I'm comfortable yeah. with. Um, and you know, like I, you know, I don't know. I like, I, I love them all. Like you said, um, but there's certain ones that I just not at this point, I can't let go of yet. You know what I mean? Uh, and you know, yeah. I'll, I'll never let go of the ball pythons. Ball pythons is my foundation. That's something that it's just, uh, I enjoy watching ball pythons be bred and that whole yeah. thing. I'll always be a part of that too much cool stuff to make with ball pythons. So I'll never let go of that. Uh, but you know, one thing I'm questioning is I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm capable for boas. I don't know. We'll see. This is my second year striking out. But like you said, it's going to humble you, bro. So I'm just kind of like, I'm you not expecting. You can figure it out. I mean, but I, I just think, I think the thing, the thing with animals is, you know, you have success with animals when you, when you um, provide consistency for them, you know, Get that routine down, and if you provide all their needs, they're going to thrive and do well for you. So, uh, you know, that was my thing early on. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to focus on one species. I'm going to develop my systems, and then yeah. I'm going to be consistent, you know. Yeah. And, and with the ball pythons, I, you know, I think I gravitated towards them because 
again, like I said, it's just the the combo potential is, is insane. I mean, you right. you look at us, you know, 20 years later, and we're still like, you know, we're producing stuff every year that's just like blowing us away, you know? And I look right. at, you know, guys like Justin who, you know, Justin started out around the same time as me, Mark Mandick and those guys. And, yeah. you know, those guys are still passionate, still excited about it because every year there's something new popping out. Yeah. So, you know, I, I tell people, you know, pick what you pick what you love, you know, work with what you love and, you know, the rest will take care of itself. I mean, you're right, because in a sense, if you're really working with what you love and you enjoy, that means you're having fun for the most part. Right. Yeah. And, no yeah. and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, last year, Ozzy um, was my first year, like breeding ball pythons. And honestly, like I was, you know, what I was doing was something I was prepared for, but all I was doing was having fun, man. Like I remember I was yeah. everything I was pairing. I was like, man, this is no matter what they breed, I'm going to get something cool. And it's, I'm cool with that. You know, yeah. even if it's the worst case scenario, it's still something I want to see. And man, just, just having that mentality of like no expectations, whatever happens, happens, you know, like as long as I'm giving this animal the care that it needs, something good should come out of it. You know what I mean? You Absolutely. just got yeah. your hopes up and just keep going. You know what I mean? If it's not this year, it's next year. Um, and I feel like lo longevity is the mindset you need to have. Am I right? You can't, uh, can't put a time frame on it. I feel like. Nah, man, you just, you know, you take it day by day. And if you're having fun and you're enjoying yourself, then, you know, that's all that matters, you know? So I don't really, I don't know, man. I It, it, it seems like right now I always have something to look forward to. Either Sick. I'm watching animals grow and develop as they grow. Yeah. And again, I'm always, I'm always working towards that um, really, really bright and clean adult. And I feel like every year I'm making, you know, more and more progress um, towards that end goal. So, you know, I, I stay excited. So you need man that's yeah. something you need that fire right you need yeah. to keep that fire inside because that's what keeps you moving um man let's let's just talk about the like like what was Ozzy before snakes man like before like you before any income came from breeding snakes what were you doing before man like what kind of individual were you like what well, kind of work did you have so so i grew up in brooklyn when i was a kid you know i grew up in brooklyn in the 80s so I grew up in a really, I grew up in Brownsville. So same neighborhood as Mike Tyson, Riddick Poe. That's so legend. You know, old dirty bastard. <laughs> R.I.P. You know what I mean? So that's where I was a bit of it, you know, got into a lot of trouble um, at a young age. But eventually um, I got out of New York and I moved down to Virginia. Um, so I think I was, uh, 21 when I moved down here and I pretty much, I didn't have anything. I had my clothes in a garbage bag. I think I had like a TV and a VCR. That was it. Wow. I didn't even have like my car. I didn't even have uh license and registration. How old were you at the time? What, what, what age were you? I was 21. 21. Okay. 21 years old. Yeah. So I came down here, got a job, started working my way through school, got my degree. Um, and at that point I kind of got back into the snakes, you know, <clears throat> I was married and my, um, ex-wife, she was terrified of snakes. So I couldn't get any snakes. We got divorced. <laughs> so I was sitting around bumming out. Damn. Uh, and then I realized that, damn, I can get some snakes. Now. <laughs> so <laughs> wait, I wait, I see the snake. like a light bulb went in your head. Oh, you're like, damn, yeah, wait yeah. a minute. So when, so I left, when I left New York and I came down here, you know, I, I, I pretty much, I just came down here to try to get a, um, you know, get a degree, get an education and get a job, you know what I mean? And right. just, um, you know, kind of turn things around. And right. I've been grinding ever since I left New York. Uh, ever since that I came down here, I've been grinding, working hard, um, you know, graduated, uh, started working in the biotech industry, had a really good career. I still consult. Um, nice. A lot of times when you see me, I'm in Europe or Korea or whatever, you know, that's usually related to my consultant work. Wow. And at the same time, I started doing Aussie Boys as a hobby business, you know, and right. that's that's been very, you know, very lucrative, very productive, very rewarding on a personal level too. You know, I have friends all over the world. Yeah, for and, real. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a fun ride. So, yeah, man. Yeah. 
So you could pretty much. I feel like you could travel. I mean, I know you could travel anywhere in the United States and be. I mean, you have all, you have people welcoming you with open arms, bro. Because you know this hobby, it's not that big community wise, but it's everywhere. Like everywhere. I mean, from what I know, for the most part, everyone everyone breeds snakes. I mean, it's growing. Um, yeah, it's growing. It's huge. Yeah, the exotic. It's not just the snakes. It's the exotic pet industry. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. growing. It's growing globally. It's the fastest growing segment of the pet industry. Um, so that's why, like, you know, right now you got massive growth every year. It's massive growth, massive growth, massive growth. And more and more people that get exposed to the hobby, they get hooked because it's a pretty cool hobby. Right. And, and it, you know, and it's unique in a sense that you could, you could have this little side hustle doing what you love and generating some uh, extra income. So we're all really, really blessed because not a lot of people have that. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are into golf. They don't make any money from it. Nope. They're just spending money. So, you know, exactly. the fact that we have a hobby that we're passionate about, you know, we're pretty fortunate. So, yeah, yeah that's why I always, I always talk up the hobby. And it, it doesn't have to be snakes. I mean, you could be breeding, you know, geckos or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, if you're passionate about it and you, and you put a lot of time and effort into it, you can make a name for yourself. You know, there's a lot of guys, there's guys out there that are known for, for chondros, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. that are known for emeralds, right? They, they focus on that one species and, you know, they're, they're selective with the animals that they breed. And over time, they develop an amazing collection and it, you know, yeah. they don't have a problem selling their uh, animals. So exactly. It yeah. all comes, it all comes with time, man, for sure. Like you're right. It's just um, yeah. patient. But if you're passionate, you know, if you're passionate about it and you enjoy it, you know, you're going to do it day in and day out. You're not going to get tired. You're not going to get bored. You're not going to get, you know, some yeah. guys get into it for a couple of years, then they get out. You know, it's just a phase. That's um, but yeah, yeah. For me, I'm hardcore, man. I'm obsessed. I feel you. I mean, this ain't for everybody, but the ones who are in this, man, they ain't no turning back. I'll tell you that much. Oh, man. And that's why, yeah. you know. I mean, it's it's tough, you know, that you have, you know, you, you are good where you're at. It, it, you're, you're good where you're at now, man, but it's tough when you want something so bad and then the significant yeah. other is keeping you back from doing it. That's when it comes tough. But hey, look, I'll tell you that the wife I have now, man, who I married, I made this very clear. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. me along with this whole group of snakes forever. And she she was she actually pushed me to this point. So it's, you know, it, it's yeah, you have a good lady on your side, man. You got to have support. Yeah. Man. You got to have support either way or, you know, because if you love it enough, you may you'll never let it go. But lucky for you, man, it all it all worked out for you, Ozzy. Um, you know, that's that's for right. a fact. Um, all right. All right. So we, we knew what you were doing for the most part. I'm looking, at, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at some of these comments. What are you reading? Read one out. Like I'm looking at Ron. He he's he was saying that people are always saying it's crashing. Um, of course, they're gonna say that it's the long process. Yeah, I I've been hearing that from day one. Yeah, for sure. We, we've had crashes, but they were they were hiccups. You know, there were market market right. adjustments or whatever. I mean, that comes and goes in any in any market. You know, like yeah. like the stock market right now is is you know, but this. This is a great buying opportunity. So, you know, sure. crashes, you, you can get some nice animals for cheap. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Um, now speaking of animals, we're going to go back to, uh, you know, the, the, the morph you're known for the most, man. The, let's talk about the birth of the OD man, the birth of orange dream. Well, I mean, I, I I'm still kind of a noob when it comes to like knowing when it originated, what year was it, all that stuff. So I'm going to need you to kind of break it down for me a little bit more. So I just, I, 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 I mean, I talked about that on so many different podcasts, but just break it. You could, you could do the short version, real, just real short the version. I, you know, I, I bought, I think I spent like $7,500 with, um, Ian from Outback Reptiles back in the day. I think it was around 2001 or something, um, maybe 2002. And um, and and he basically said, "Yeah, I'm going to throw in a fancy female for you." And he gave me this this uh, banded female from his fancy pot. He used to he used to bring in a lot of babies from Africa right from the farm. Damn. So this female was fresh out of the egg. She probably hatched like a week prior just came in from Africa. She was in shed. I can still see like her umbilical scar and everything. And Damn. he was, you know, he threw her in. So, you know, I took her, couldn't think much of it. 
and she shed out and started eating. And I just started to notice that her color, like I had reduced, uh, they used to call them bandit. I used to get bandits all the time, but she just had a lot more color. So it just kept her and, you know, proved her out. And, you know, the rest is history, man. That is nuts, bro. And the, just to think, I mean, it's like almost endless what you could still do with it. Like it's come yeah. so far and it's not even over. It's still a gene where if it's in the mix, it's like, holy shit. Like it's next yeah. level. You know what I mean? So I think it's pretty iconic that, uh, you know, you not only did you discover something like that, but just where it's going to be going. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. something that's going to get pushed aside anytime soon. Um, it's everywhere. Dude, it's everywhere. Oliver, Oliver O'Rourke is uh, saying, if I remember pro exotics, I remember pro exotics. I remember buying um, virus and in little balloons from pro exotics back in the day. Buying what now? Virus and the disinfectant, you know, the blue. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, the blue. blue yeah, yeah. And I, I get about a gallon now, but back in the day, Robin Marklin used to sell it like in little balloons. <laughs> What? Dude, you don't want to you don't want to get caught with that. You're going straight to jail. Yeah, gonna... We we used to ship snakes in, in socks, in tube socks. I could see that. I mean, there was no snake bags. We, you know, the industry was like, you know, it was young back then. So hey, you know what? I think I've even seen that. I think somebody was so pissed that they got a, a, a snake shipped to him with us with them snakes in the socks, but really that's the original way to, to do it. I mean, I mean, they're gonna live, you know what I mean? I hope the sock wasn't used, but damn, you know. Yeah, no doubt. That's yeah. crazy. So, what are you more stoked for this year? Your your uh, ball pythons or your boas? Like best case scenario, let's say you get the clutch. Either way, wh whichever one you want, is it going to be the ball pythons or the boas? What would you say? Man, I you know pretty pretty much everything I put together. If like I'm not stoked about it, I won't even do it. But, uh, <laughs> so you know the boas, the boas are you know the boas are just man. I I. I have a bunch of grabber boas downstairs, but I don't know if I'm gonna get a healthy litter. So just have to wait and see. Um, if I do, you know, they should all be pretty cool. The one that slugged out, you know, that kills me because that's one of my favorite projects. But um, I have a lot of crazy ball python um, pairings. You know, everything is cool. Everything is cutting edge. So some of it, I don't even know what it's gonna look like. So. You know, it's really hard for me to. That's the exciting part. You know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes certain clutches that I don't think are gonna, you know, really be that exciting. You know, they'll have. I'm, I'm just, I'm excited about it all, man. I, I wake up every day excited. You know, going downstairs. Um, yeah, that's what it's all about. Laid, you know, I'm just starting to get clutches, so I won't be really hatching a, a ton of stuff out until uh, mid May into June and July should be very busy. Right. Um, which kind of sucks because I hate being busy during the summer months. I bet. But um, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be quite busy during the summer months. And I'm gonna try to um, you know do like Ralph Davis and and I don't I'm not gonna have a birth in record, but I'm gonna try to keep everything posted on Instagram. Like I just posted my second clutch today. Damn. So I'm gonna post it that way. If people, you know, are interested in a specific project, they could reach out. So that's what's up, man. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't think uh, I would always get excited, man. Because uh, when you were one of the few people I followed, I remember everything you posted was like things I just didn't even believe that were real. You know what I mean? Like, and this is what like 2017, like 2000, late 2016 is when I started like following pages like yours and. um now it's just like it's still unbelievable oh. stuff you still stuff you still post now is still like it's still mind-blowing it's not like it's not like oh look what it is it's no it's not. yeah what i love what i love is now i could i could scroll through social media and i see dude i see like you know guys who i never heard of before posting like some amazing stuff so yeah. it's a lot more um there's a lot more breeders out there producing really really cool stuff and I think I think that the hobby has matured and everybody, you know, everybody is focused on producing like really cool cutting edge combos. So it's an exciting time. And I, I love I love breeding season, you know, not only uh, because I'm hatching out cool stuff, but I, I love to see what other people are working with and what other people are doing, too. So 
It's gonna be crazy. And I love some of these uh, young, young uh, cats that are coming up. Oh yeah. You can tell they have a lot of passion. Yeah. You know, so Novi's reptiles. Yeah. Watching that young lady. So she's, she's killing it, man. The industry. So I love seeing that, man. And, yeah, this, you know, this girl, she pops in every podcast, man. Yeah. I'm like, she's I passionate. Just, you could tell. She's yeah. you know, she's always active. She's always posting pictures of her animals or whatever. So that's yeah. you know, that's passion right there. And you know, she'll still be doing this 10 or 20 years from now. 100 percent Releasing some insane stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there you go. If that's not motivation for you, which I already know it is, she's probably screaming right now at her, her computer. <laughs> uh, but man, that's awesome, man. That's I think this is what this is why I really wanted to do this, man. Because all these breeders that you know we all look up to, man, they're all cool people. They're all they they all they want us all to win. You know what I mean? For the most part, everyone I know, everyone I mess with, you know, they're all positive people. They give me the time of day. I ain't nobody, but you know what I mean. They're all they all want these all all us new people are, are, are that are grinding day to day. Trying to yeah. come up, we got the support from the big people. You know what I mean? From the ones who've been doing this all, all time. you guys, all you guys that are doing a podcast, all you guys that are doing videos on YouTube, uh, active on social media. You know, you guys are the industry. I mean, you guys are driving the industry. Without you, you know, it would be dead. So, you know, you guys yeah. are driving growth. You're educating people. You're exposing new people to the hobby. So, you know, it's it's all one big reptile nation. So, yeah, hundred percent. You know, I want to see everybody do good. I want to see the industry grow, you know. One cat I want to give a shout out to because he's not – he hasn't been in here for too long, but he's made a quite a big of an impact. Morph – morph excuse me, morph mixology, reptiles. So yeah. this guy right here, he he does – he posts a lot of do-it-yourself stuff, and that's what people want to see, how to yeah. build cages, how to, you know, how to take care of rodents and stuff like that. So I give, I give really, really props to pages like that that are just right. literally – people who have a, a big grasp on how to build things and then they're passing it down and teaching it. And uh, I feel like that's what was really helping him out with his following is everyone wanted to see how to build things and whatnot. And then yeah. he, also, he also has really cool snakes too. So I get props to anyone grinding like that. Anyone who's putting other people on game yeah. and you know, that's, I, that's what it's all about. I'm telling you right there, a hundred percent. So yeah. shout out to you, man. That's, that's good stuff. Um, but yeah, Oz, I mean, a lot of people are stoked that you're here tonight. Um, I think they want to know a little bit what's – I mean, I know you're excited for everything, right? Anything that pops out, I think you're going to be stoked for, right? But – You guys want to hear some specific – Yeah, you know what I mean? Come on. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to beat around the bush. Bro. Come on. You know so, what I mean? <laughs> so I'm, I'm working on um, – I'm trying to produce uh, uh, Desert Ghost Pides. This season. You have to, so, thank you. so hold on, you glitched out. You have to repeat that. So nobody heard what you just said. Repeat that one more time. I have a chance at hitting Super Orange Dream, uh, Super Orange Dream, Leopard, Desert Ghost, Pied this season. Um, I'm trying to produce Super Orange Dream, Ultramel, Desert Ghost. Um, I'm working on producing some uh, VPI, Azantic, Orange Dream, Desert Ghost Pides. Oh, dirty. Uh, oh. Super Orange Dream, Super Red Stripe, Genetic Stripe Clown with, <laughs> with Yellow Belly in the mix. So that those are some of the those are some of the um Will Will Merrow says he quits. Will, <laughs> Will, 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 Will Will's a he quit. bastard, man. Will's a sneaky bastard. He's got a lot of cool stuff over there, like on the DL. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I yeah, love bro. Will. He's got, a, he's got a nice collection, and he's doing it upright. He's doing it upright because the stuff that he's hatching out. I mean, everybody's gonna want it. You know, everybody's gonna 100%. want it. Hundred yeah. percent. This, this stuff does not last. It, it goes. You know what I mean? And I, I've noticed that about Will, man. Will, I'm excited to actually go see what Will has at Tinley. Um, really blessed that I get to go yeah, be a part of that. Uh, yeah, to see what, you know, yeah. what I, mean? I don't know if my pockets can handle it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do something about it because I think I need some something of Will's in my collection. I can tell you right now. Will's no joke. So please go, go follow my boy Will. Um, Royal Canadian Reptiles, man. The RCR homie. He's dope as shit. And look, Ozzy's even vouching for him right now, man. Certified. Right, Oz? He's got a few animals I want. Woo. He's, actually, he's actually bringing me something down, too. So, you know. Don't, don't, don't I'll tell you what. 
You know? The day Ozzy, the day Ozzy Boy says that he has that I have animals that he wants, that's when I'm <laughs> that's when I'm putting a fucking stripe on the jacket. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? That's goals right there, bro. You know what I mean, Will? So you ain't quitting anything. Pipe it down. You're still going, man. Will. That's, hey, the- that's, that's my boy, man. We were partying in Mexico, man. Good times. I saw that. So Mexico, man, that's going to be an annual thing right here, right? I don't know, man. I think um, I think the whole corona, the coronavirus thing, I don't know. It might, it might uh, uh, disrupt things this year, but... I'm hoping we could do different locations. You know, I don't want to go to the same resort. Um, I think it'd be cool if we could, you know, hit different countries every year. That'd be hard. And dude, it's, it's just crazy you're fun, man. I, you know. Well, you as well start going. If you're going to travel, you know, and you're willing to go all the way to Mexico, which, you know, is kind of, there's other areas that you could go explore and see. Yeah. But I'll tell yeah. you what, man, if you want to make, because I'm a picky eater, but I like to eat. So, like, I know Greece has nothing but bomb food. I heard their food is off the chain. I know Italy has nothing but bomb food. Uh, yeah. what, what, are, what are some of your favorite places to eat in Europe? Like, if you could pick, like, if it was just an eating experience and you're someone's like, hey, I'll fly you anywhere just to try out this food, where would you go? Uh, in Europe? In Europe. Man, that's tough, man. Italy definitely has some really, really good food. It's crazy because in England you can get some amazing Indian food. Oh, I don't mess. I don't mess with Indian food, no but Indian? I've had, oh I've man, had, no, I've, had good, I've had good Indian food. You're right, but like I remember the. Do you remember? Have you ever seen the Indian food in the malls and stuff? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not. Yeah, yeah I, no, I, I, I think about sometimes, but no, I know you're right. No, there's some. If it's if it's at a right spot, there's Indian food's fire to try. No, but you're right. So, so you know the 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 funny thing is is you know the the world the world is so global now like you'll go to europe you know but then you'll find a really good greek restaurant so it's uh, you know it, it it's it's tricky like you go to chicago and you have all kinds of restaurants you know what i mean you can get good japanese food you can get you know uh, I, I mean good italian food so i i, I think traveling you know, I don't know, man. It's, there's good food everywhere, you know? And and again, I'm, I'm kind of a picky eater, too. I like yeah. to eat good food. So, you know, um, you know, Robin Markin, Marklin, he, he, he took us to the sushi spot in Chicago, and I was just mind-blowing. Um, so I really, I really, really enjoy real good sushi. Um, you know, so that's a tough question. I like to travel, though. I just like to... I like the European countries that I've been to. So, yeah. So you, so I mean, you're pretty much used to traveling, right? I think we were talking a little bit before before we got we went live. We we're talking. I was asking you how you got any jet lag from you coming back from Brussels and whatnot. Um, yeah. You, I mean, you. I mean, you almost got to be made for traveling too, because traveling ain't for everybody. Am I right? I mean, it's yeah, yeah. Some people don't like it. You know, some people stress out, get anxiety. They don't like to leave home. Um, I love I love to travel. Um, I wish I could do more. You know, the the snakes kind of held me back from doing that in the past. Um, I got my nephew Jordan helping me out now, so he's wow. been a, he's been a huge help, and it kind of it kind of frees me up so that I could do a little more travel. Now, is your nephew on like is he like on the payroll type of thing? Like he's there yeah. all the time, like almost like a Jesse to Miguel type type ordeal. Yeah, yeah, or- he's yeah he's working full time with me now. So, you know, that's awesome. how old's your nephew? He's uh 1985, no, 1990. So uh, he's uh, he's five, so he's 30. Yeah, he's going he's about to be 30. Yeah, about to be about to be or 31. Yeah, or something like that. That's a good age, man. That's a good age to start learning stuff, you know. I won't, you know, I mean, what is he what was he doing prior to you working, uh, taking care of your animals? What was he, uh, he was, was he working, into? uh, he was working an office job, but he, you know, definitely prefers to work for me. Um, of, of course, you know, it's a lot more laid back, you know, a lot more flexible. Um, I'm kind of teaching him the business side of things. Um, right. He's worked for me in the past too. When I had my warehouse and my shop, he used to work for me part time. So he's he's familiar. He's been around the animals, um, and he's comfortable with them. And I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to train him up and, um, you know, give him a few pointers, et cetera. 
you know, he's got a young family. So, okay. um, Man. yeah, trying to teach him, teach him to grind, you know. If I had a, if I had an uncle Ozzy, that'd be my favorite uncle on earth. <laughs> I, I would please, I would just make sure you are happy with anything I did inside your room. Yeah. That way, I can, like for sure be a forever partner of what you're doing. I mean, but also, I mean, is he into the snakes? Is that something he enjoys yeah, he, or what? He's yeah, he's he's into them. He's into them. Um, I don't know how hardcore, but he's definitely he enjoys them. He's cool, you know, comfortable working with them. You know. It, did he have a moment of the fear that he had to conquer or anything? Like, did he had a did he have a breaking yeah, point? He, yeah, one of, actually when I when I first first two ball pythons that I bought, I bought one for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and I think he was around. I think he was around uh, back then. I think he was like ten. Right. So and he was cool. He was always fascinated with you know reptiles. So he's been good with it. You know, maybe he'll start breeding his own. Uh, in the future, you know, he's been thinking about it. So, I wonder if I wonder if uh, Jesse's ever going to start breeding Miguel's brother. He, I don't know if that would ever happen, but I think your nephew should start the trend. That way, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I try to discourage people from doing it, like just for money, because people might, people might see you, you know, see you making money or whatever, and say, I want to do that too. I want to make money, but you know. I think I have an unfair advantage because I'm so passionate about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not, if you're not passionate about it, I don't know. I, I guess you could be successful if you're doing it just for the money, but I think the odds are against you. It really are. It's a very slim chance that it's yeah. going to go down for you. Because yeah. if you have that's your motive, then that's all you're going to want to be thinking about. You, you won't have any fun. It's just, it's just going to, Eventually, yeah, eventually it's going to, you know, it's going to wear you down and then you, you're going to start to neglect the animals. And then once you start neglecting the animals, you know, the animals are not going to be productive, you know, and it's just going to become miserable. You know what I mean? So. 100%. All right, Ozzy, I got some I got a question for you that's kind of heavy on my mind. Um who the hell was who who are your surroundings coming up in this, bro? Because I know you just weren't solo dolo. You had to have some, no, some sort of inspiration. No, no, no. So so yeah. when I was coming up, um when I was coming up, you know, the the top dogs in the industry are first of all, first of all, Ian from Outback Reptiles. Um, yeah. keep talking, know, I'm listening, keep talking. Yeah, he was a bit of a mentor for me. Um then you had guys like Ralph Davis, uh, you know, Kevin from Nerd, Brian Barchak, Tracy Barker, the Snake Keeper. Those were all of the guys that were motivating me and, and being inspired by. And a lot of other smaller breeders, too. So I don't know where MJ went. I think he went to get his bong. I'm going to check out some comments over here. Mexico seems to be the safest place with Corona. <laughs> I heard, I heard that Corona's in Mexico too, though. Dude, Corona's in Chula Vista, which is like 15 minutes away from me, bro. It's in San Diego, unfortunately, too. Nice. It's nice. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I probably, I've probably already been exposed to it. You know, sitting on those planes. Oh, I know. Man. My, I'm traveling next weekend to. Uh, I'm gonna go to Tinley next weekend. And my girl's like, she's trying to give me the no fly zone. She's like, nope. I was like, dude. I mean, I was like, I mean, we just just because this stuff's happening doesn't mean you shouldn't not go on with your lives. And you know, I mean, I get, I get it. It's a work thing, and you can't go. But I mean, I'm still, uh, I'm still gonna travel, man. I got, gotta go. I don't have a choice. Yeah, I gotta go. So. Yeah, I'm still traveling. I, I, I really think it's gonna spread. I don't think there's no containing it. You know. I think eventually we're all going to get exposed to it unless you just, you know, stay in your house, you know, and not have anybody come over. But I think it's out there. You know, a lot of people are walking around with it, don't even realize they have it. So, no, yeah, Miguel, for real. Miguel is doing deals. He's doing mm -hmm. deals on the show. Is he? With deals with who? I don't know, man. That guy's always grinding. He has a question, though, he wants me to ask you. What's that? He wants to know, is it true that you blocked him? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think Miguel, I think Miguel, I think Miguel did something for me to block him. 
You but probably I, did. I don't remember. I don't remember blocking him. I honestly didn't know how to block anybody uh, on Instagram until they showed me. I, I I have quite a long block list now, though. I don't do it. I don't do it with negativity and drama, man. I you know. Keep it moving, bro. Don't. Well, I don't even vibes. Know. Yeah, if you want to hate or you know create drama, you know take that shit somewhere else. Yeah, and my biggest opportunity was just not using the block button and responding to it. But I'll tell you what, that block button is way more effective than responding to anything. So if you're if you're really just tired of seeing somebody, yeah, why waste your time? Yeah, just block them, yo. Just I mean, yeah. honestly, that that just that started working with me a lot better than spending energy fucking exactly. trying to talk, yeah. try to talk shit to a keyboard warrior who I'll more likely never see. And if I do see him, it's probably somebody from a hidden private account because that's how fucking weird shady motherfuckers are in this damn game. It's it's kind of crooked, bro. It's just sure. that's why I also just started, you know what I mean? It's just it's always good to stay in your lane and just kind of enjoy doing what you're doing, not really worried about other people and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't get too attached either. This is just, you know, this is a hobby. Like have yeah. fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. You know, it's weird. Yeah, you gotta stay focused. Keep it positive. But yeah, man. Miguel, Miguel, you're good, man. I unblocked you. <laughs> he's not gonna, he unblocked you. He don't mean that don't mean he's gonna follow you, but he unblocked you. <laughs> you know what? I was I was probably trying to block Jordan because Jordan oh. was, Jordan was always evolving pythons back then. That was fraud. When, when I first met them up in Canada, it was funny because I kept I kept getting them mixed up, and I think I was like. Calling Jordan Miguel. <laughs> oh man, imagine getting mixed up with JP. Oh <laughs> yeah, so J JP JP used to be always evolving pythons too, or something like that. Canada. Yeah, can yeah, it, it was AEP Canada. It was literally the exact same thing as Miguel, but with Canada at the yeah, end. Yeah, Miguel Miguel wanted to knock him out. No, but check this out. One one thing me so I didn't mean to cut you off, but one thing JP was doing was taking all these legit like photos almost similar to what miguel was taking so it almost looked like his photos too but he was you know jp was taking photos up in, in billy's place but it just looked too like oh who's this new guy his name is exactly like miguel's but he you know then he's posted really nice snakes that could be miguel so it was just way too like yo like this is this is fucking fraudulent you know what i mean but jp's yeah, real both, JP's yeah not, he's both, a real dude. yeah they're both, <laughs> they're both talented they are and and both of those cats bring a lot to the industry, create a lot of excitement. So kudos, hats off to you guys. There you go. Um, nothing but love. Hell yeah, all love, man. <laughs> oh man, we had JP on. I think that we had JP on before we had you on. Yeah, uh, yeah I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I gotta check out some of those interviews. But yeah, yeah, uh, JP. I love Jordan, man. He's a funny, he's a funny cat. He was so concerned about can we go? Like he's like, how long do you want to go to? And I'm like, well, I mean, I was like, I don't know, like a couple hours. He's like, we can't go that long. Next thing you know, we're in two and a half hours, and he just keeps going. And I'm just like, J like JP, you were worried about stop talking, JP. At all people, like JP love, but the thing is, like, he's such a passionate guy, man. So like, what he talks yeah, about, yeah. like all stuff that he researched, you know, you know, he geeked yeah. out like a bunch on his own, and he he learned exactly. a bunch. Stuff. so yeah. he retains so much information so when you ask him stuff his you should see his eyes light up like if they get like this yeah. big yeah. and it's yeah. like so funny man but that's the kind of stuff that i like and uh i remember i remember uh you know when i first met jp and you know from what i thought he was prior to meeting him in person i was like this guy's so cool man i was like this guy's you know like he's happy to be around anyone who's into snakes into yeah. reptiles he'll talk to anyone so yeah shout out to jp I'm glad I had him on the show. He had a really good time. Um, he looks up to you. He was showing off some of your snakes that he got. I think he showed off showed off almost all of them. I think he has like four or five of your uh, four or five of your snakes or something like that. But uh, yeah, he's got some uh, he's got some pod stuff. But yeah, good, definitely good kid, man. Real passionate. Yeah, hundred you know, percent. Puts out a lot of good content. So you know, yeah, kudos, kudos to you guys. Keep, keep so doing hobby. Now let me ask you this, Ozzy. Let's say. At some point in your life, obviously, you know, if you're the snakes are still going and you have freed up, you don't ever see yourself putting yourself out there on YouTube more often or like didn't like what if you just got a squad of people to do all the content for you? They, you, you know, just getting yourself more on camera, like showing your stuff. Would that ever maybe happen someday, you think, or what? I don't I don't I don't see it, man. It's just not me. Um, I, I kind of I want to put out some content you know, kind of along the lines of what you were talking about earlier, just to kind of give something back to the hobby. Yeah. I, I, cause I can't respond to everybody. I, I get a lot of text messages and inquiries and stuff. 
So, I, you know, this may come in the future. I've been thinking about it for, for quite a while. So if I can, um, if I could find some uh, people who are good at video editing and all of that, I do want to put out some content on husbandry. I, and, and what the other thing I want to put out some content on is the business side of things, you know, um, yeah. and just to, just to help people um, try to take their hobby and turn it into, um, you know, uh, a legitimate income stream and, you know, a tool to build wealth. Yeah. I'm big into that now. And like I said, man, I started out from nothing. So, <clears throat> right. So you you're know. the ground up literally you're, yeah, you, you, like I said, um, one thing I, I was kind of chatting with Ozzy before we started was like, I was kind of want to get in debt of like how you, how you even got into the snake game and to hear a story where Ozzy moved out of a place where he was constantly getting caught up and stuff. You know what I mean? Obviously, he left the place that was no good for him. So as soon as he did that, he grinded. What did you have? You had a bag full of clothes in a in a in a in a trash bag. You said? Yeah, my, yeah. I didn't even have a suitcase, man. My clothes. I got a humbling experience, yeah. man. And that's East. I'll tell you right now. I want the great hood. One thing I'll get props to the East Coast, man, is they have real struggles, man. Like California, look, we, it's not like we don't have struggles in the West Coast, but the kind of struggles that East Coast people have to go through are no joke. Um, it's a grind, man. It's almost where if you can make it in the East Coast, I feel like you can make it anywhere. I'll tell you yeah, that. It's it's, it's really, hard. Yeah, it's it's really anywhere in the country. I mean, uh, you know, that. In the city, yeah. like right now in the Midwest and stuff, they're dealing with meth and um, opioid, you know, and it, it just like when the economy, when the economy is uh, bad and there's a lot of crime and, you know, you know, you got that everywhere. Um, there, there's pockets of it. All across yeah. the country. So I was just in Decatur, Illinois, um, in an area just like, man, it looked really, really depressed. It looked like it was a, a really, um, you know, a really affluent area at one point. But, you know, you could tell that the economy is oppressed there. And, you know, um, so, you know, it can happen anywhere for real. But at the same time, too, there's a lot of opportunity in this country. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of people take it for granted. But I do 100%. It's never, yeah, it's never been easier to start a business. Um, it's never been yeah. easier to you know invest in real estate or whatever, and you know grow your wealth. So, and and if you have reptiles, you know that's a huge opportunity right there to generate an extra uh, income stream. Like you said, it's not just reptiles in America. You could find almost any kind of hustle to get yeah. yourself like ahead of the game. Like I'm thinking it's a land of opportunity, man. We live, we yeah. still live in the best country in the world. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Top 10%, yeah. top 10% in terms of wealth, 10% yeah. rich is, uh, Fact. Uh, you know, people in the negative, but yeah, we're blessed. Right. Yeah. I mean, exactly. It's like, you know, it's, it's a state of mind, bro. At the end of the day. And, uh, you can work, you know, you can work out of a negative state of mind. If you don't have that mentality and you're always negative, there's things you can do to exercise your mind. There's things you can do to become a positive person. It just, it takes like, you have to change yourself. And I, you know, this hobby taught me that man, like I didn't know how pissed off and depressed I was until I got into this hobby and then, yeah. and then how much happier and easier my life got as soon as I got into this hobby. Um, and so, you know, you got to learn somehow, but it's really up to you at the end of the day. Some people do it at 21. Some people do it at fucking 51. It just, yeah. Okay. It's never too late. Right. Um, real quick, Novi has a, a question. I want to ask her, I want to ask you this question from Novi Reptiles, but she just wants a tip on so if someone like her who's she gets to a point where she's feel like she's producing animals that are at like a good market pricing, you know. What do you recommend? So selling snakes, I'm producing good. So basically, what do you, what do you recommend? How does somebody put their stuff out there? What's the best way to start like putting your 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 product out there that you know you kind of want to get paid for? You know what I mean? Like stuff that you feel is like has good quality. Um, you know, like just what's your what's your best tip for that? Like it, putting your animals out there once they're they're ready to be sold or whatnot. Well, exactly what she's doing right now. So she's she's active on social media. Um, you know, I think most of us in the industry knows who she is, you know what I mean? And anybody, anybody in the industry that sees, you know, a young person coming up, they're going to give that person a hand. So, um, exactly yep. what you're doing now, just, you know, 
continue to post, uh, continue to uh, show people what you're working with and uh, what projects that you're working on. And, you know, two, three years from now, when you start hitting those projects, I think people will be more than comfortable with, you know, uh, picking up some stuff from you. Yeah. You know, I, I buy stuff all the time from, um, from my customers and from other smaller breeders that I've never really met in person, but I see them, I see them on social media or I see right. them on forums. Nobody's on the forums as much anymore, but you know, back then that's how we, uh, that's how we kind of built a community was on the forums. And that's basically how I got exposed. I was, you know, I was just a hobbyist posting pictures, showing people my collection, et cetera. And when it came time for me to start posting animals, people knew who I was and, you know, they, they were comfortable with um, sending me money. Yeah. So, how big of a, how big is the marketing aspect as far as making a logo and stuff? How, do, how big do you think that comes into play? Sorry. It definitely uh, helps. I mean, you know, ha having a professional, um, you know, having a professional um, business shows that you're passionate and you take pride in what you're doing. You know what I mean? So again, that's going to help you um, get top dollar for your animals and it's going to help you um, have consumer confidence, you know, right. when people see your ads, et cetera. So helps you stand out, you know, from the crowd. So, so do it up. And then also, I think attending shows and whatnot, getting your face out there, you know what I mean? Meeting people, making connections. I feel like that's a that's, big part of it. Yeah, that's that's the real value of setting up at shows is uh, the networking aspect of it. Everybody goes to shows and they, and they measure the success of the show based on how much they sold that weekend. But that's not what it's about. It's about setting up future sales right. and um, setting networking and setting up connections where you could do deals in the future. Maybe you can acquire a very unique animal from somebody that you met at the show um, or somebody, you know, may not have any money to buy your animals at that show, you know, but three months from now, three years from now, five years from now, you know, their situation changes and they're ready to invest. You know, right. if you leave a good impression, they're going to remember you and you know, right. circle back and maybe do business with you in the future. So, you know, going to the shows and doing those shows is all about networking. You know, it's all about community, um, you know, and hanging out and having a good time, man, making friends. Now, let's uh, speaking of shows. When was your first show? When did you start popping your head in shows and whatnot? Because, I mean, you've, you've, you've set up at Tinley before, right? Like you've done Tinley shows. Or yeah, you know? I, I've never honestly I've never I've never been a big show guy. I, I haven't done a lot of shows. The main show that I've done has been Tinley. but I used to just go to the hangout and to buy animals, um, you know, kind of like Miguel. Right. Buy all of the good animals before anybody can get to them. But um, <laughs> that's definitely yeah, so I. Yeah, I used to just go and hang out. Um, I set up at, you know, some local shows, you know, once or twice, but <laughs> never with any real consistency. Um, White Plains set up at the Hamburg show a couple of times, but. It just, you know, I, I'd be sitting at the show and just, you know, I want to walk around. I want to look at stuff. I don't want to be stuck behind a table. So doing shows has never really been my thing. Right. Um, I used to go to Daytona all the time, but I never set up. I, I set up at Daytona for the first time maybe uh, two years ago. I've okay. done the past uh, two Daytona shows, mm -hmm. and uh, that show seems to be coming back. Right. And, um, yeah, so... If you were to ride with one show, right, what would be one show that you, let's just say the best show you've ever had a good experience, meeting people and whatnot, like, let's even take it back in the day. What, what would you say was the one show you had the best time at? Oh, Daytona, hands down, man. A lot of, a lot of good memories. Because um, uh, Daytona is like right down the beach. Um, man, and I got, you know, I, I got memories going back to 2000, 2001, mm -hmm. um, you know. So <laughs> a lot of, lot of crazy memories, man. A lot of fun times. Um, Chicago is, uh, has always been my best show as far as, uh, doing sales, doing deals and networking. Yeah. Um, I bet. You know, and I've had some good times with Chicago too. 
So, um, yeah. And then I, you know, I came out to Pomona and I, dude, I really, that was my first West Coast, you know, hanging out at a West Coast show. Had a really good time that weekend. And I, I want to get back out there. I want to start, um, yeah. I want to start doing some shows out there for real. I mean, the West Coast is just, it's a different vibe. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I was, I was shocked at how big Pomona was. So yeah. a lot of tables. I'm about to roast myself right now. You probably don't even know this story, uh, Ozzy, but okay, let's take it back when Ozzy was at Pomona, okay? I knew Ozzy. I knew, okay, so I knew Ozzy. This is at this point, I had Ozzy's number. Ozzy's like, yo, I'm at Pomona, man. Link up with me. I'm like, all right, cool. So I, I don't know who I was with, but I was walking into the hotel. I see this guy. You were wearing that hat. What are those hats? Like, uh, I forget the name of them, man, but you were wearing a hat. Uh, not like a baseball hat, but it was one of those hats. I forget. I don't even know what kind of hat it is. I can't even think like about a, it. Like a Kango, like a cap. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So, and you were staring at this really nice Cadillac. Like this Cadillac was parked in front of the Sheraton, and you were just there by yourself. And I walk. I looked at the Cadillac. I was like, "Damn, it's a nice that car." Was, and then I, that was a rental. Yeah, we we rented. <laughs> we rented oh our God, was, okay. So, anyways, I see you stare at the car, and I look at you. I'm like, "Damn, that's a nice whip." I think we made eye contact. But then, like, as I, I don't know if I was as hella stone. I don't know what it was. But I remember as I walked by, I was like, yo, I was like, that's fucking Ozzy. That was Ozzy fucking Boyd's. And I was, I don't know, I was just too, I don't know what it was, bro. I mean, but I was like, you know what? I'm just too, I'm in too embarrassed to go say what up. I don't know what it was, bro. I had some weird fucking starstruck type shit going on right there. That was there. the indicate. That was the indicate. I was too I was too much into my head. And then I was like, yo, I'm gonna see him when there's more P. I don't know. I just felt I don't know that for the first time, it doesn't take much for me to not want to go up to somebody and say what up. I'm I'm usually not like, but I don't know, bro. I was pretty stoked to see you, but then I fucked up because I ended up not seeing you at the auction. You didn't go to the auction, huh? Nah, I didn't go to the auction. So I thought I was gonna see you there. Pomona's the type of place to where if you are coming, if you roll and you see somebody. You know, it's it's very easy. You might not see them again. You know what I mean? And, and and it could be to where like you just only see him at the auction. And I was more like, okay, I'll see him at the auction because everyone goes to the auction. And I fucked up that moment, man. So I, that was probably my embarrassing embarrassing uh, moment. I wanted to drop right now. I was too yeah, I was, too big, too big of a pussy to go say what up to Aussie boys and talk one on one. I think I think we were hanging out. But yeah, if anybody ever sees me, man, just say what up, man. Yeah, Don't be a hi. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, yeah, he was chilling. You were big time chilling, man. But anyways, uh, we're gonna get Ozzy. You got to get back out to a Pomona show. You we, at, at least yeah, definitely set that up. You got to come down to San Diego. We got to eat them tacos. I already got, I already got yes. stuff lined up to take you, bro. Um, you know, I, I'm a big foodie, bro. Especially down here, I have pride with the, with the places we got down here to eat. So, hundred, hundred percent. Um, now Ozzy, real quick. Um. I want to go back to what you were talking about earlier, you know, like the bakers and the Pete call and stuff like that. What's your relation to them, man? I mean, I, I only heard Forrest talk so much about them. And uh, unfortunately we weren't, we were going to do an episode where he was just going to break down. Who they were, you know, because I don't, I hear nothing about them from, from people who've been in this forever, but like, you know, I only know so much. So like, what's your relationship with them? Those guys are the pioneers, man. I mean, they, they, you know, I went over to Pete Call's place and that basically, like, I, I left Pete Call's house and I was like shell shocked. Like, I couldn't even speak. Um, Damn. Just blown away, blown away. That was the first time I saw an albino ball python. That was the first time I saw a pie ball. Um, right. And it's just like, I didn't even know any of that existed. Um, you know, and I, and I left his place with, um, an albino, uh, call straight and boa. And, um, yeah. I was just floored, man. Just, you know, you know, so that, that kind of, that kind of sealed my, um, obsession with the hobby was that one visit to Pete Call's place. And then, you know, going online and following Ralph Davis and those cats. I mean, those guys are the, uh, you know, guys that inspired us back then. I mean, you know, Ralph Davis's forum, um, he used to, he used to have his little blog. Yeah. Um, he's put out a lot of good information. He had his birth in records. I mean, um, yeah, I, I used to live on Ralph Davis's website. Um, you know, the snake keeper out, out, you know, on the West coast, Tracy Barker, like they were producing all of the crazy stuff back then. And it, it was, you know, it was real inspirational. So, um, those guys are the pioneers, you know. Kevin, Kevin was the first one to really start, um, you know, working with ball pythons. You know, 
and back when nobody wanted to touch them, you know, he, he saw the potential, you know, and, um, again, those guys are the pioneers. They're, they're the real pioneers. A lot of people, uh, that are in the game now, you know, you say RDR or, you know, you say some of these names and they don't even know who these guys are, but you know, yeah. who, for me, they, then, started, they started the ball Python industry. It shouldn't be like that. I don't feel like, you know, and I feel like unless that's that's what they want, but I feel like, you know, it's history that, you know, it's like nobody knowing about Lincoln or something. It's like, yo, these are people. <laughs> you should remember yeah. these people, you know, yeah. especially people who are like, yo, I mean, at this point in my life, man, I'm all about raising my family that I want to raise. And I, I love this. It's the snakes Thank and family. You. That's it, bro. Yeah. That's all I care about. So if I can learn about, you know, for instance, having somebody like you who knows about Pete Call and the Barkers and that's like honestly, that's what passions me the most. I want to know about that. I, I want to know more about them. because uh, yeah. I feel like Paul, that's where it's from. He called and uh Brian Sharp too, you know, Brian Sharp, uh old time in the industry, he's been around forever. He started to sharp uh albino uh boa. Mm -hmm. uh, he called, he he blew up when he flew out to the west coast and um bought uh I think he bought an albino boa. From these guys, they had, I think they had like 1.2, and they had them for years. They couldn't get them to breed. Mm -hmm. Paul flew out to the West Coast, convinced them. And I don't know, you know, this is all hearsay, so I don't know if this is exactly how the story went, but he convinced them to sell them the mail, and he bought the mail for like 25 grand. Oh my God. Read it, you know, flew back to the East Coast, went in his basement, put the mail with a couple of big females, got some babies. They were all normal looking. Um, raised them up, and then eventually started producing albino boas. Um, he was the first one to produce albino boas. And, of course, he was selling them for top dollar. And eventually he got his hands on some pie balls. Um, and I think he, I think Brian Sharp brought in a pie ball. Hmm. And I think he sold it to Pete Call. Damn. And, you know, Pete Call was producing pies. And, I mean, he was selling those things for 25, 30 grand a pop. Jeez, bro. You producing, what year was this? I don't know, man. It was that was before I got into it. So probably in the 90s. Um Jeez. all of this was going down. And uh yeah, Pete Carl was like he was the first one to like really blow up. You know what I mean? And did you ever, uh, did you ever go to one of his parties? I heard he had some gnarly parties. Nah. <laughs> uh yeah, Pete, Pete, Pete. He was a wild dude, man. So I heard. Uh, I think Barcheck. When we had Barcheck on, he just. Uh, I think he gave us like a. We gave us a. He gave us a taste of one party one time where he got in so much shit from Lori. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. in trouble just bringing this up. So thank, appreciate you, Barcheck. Thanks, Brian, for sharing that story. But just imagine, yeah. man, just uh, raging with people. Well, like yeah, think, think about it. So Daytona. I mean, they. they, they K in sales over the weekend. You know. 300k in sales, you know, mm -hmm. at a show, and then they would be partying, man. You know, we used to go to lollipops. It, you know, it was all snake breeders up in lollipops, and it was just a, just a wild time, man. You know, That's so bizarre. yeah, yeah, now, <laughs> a lot of fun, man. But, I feel like yeah. I feel like Miguel's like the new Pete Call now, man. Party wise, yeah, yeah definitely, Miguel. Yeah. Miguel is the new big dog in the in the industry. Well, you just—I mean—you be doing things you never expect to be doing if you're hanging out with Miguel. I'll tell you that right now. And then it's just—it's all fun until you just want to fall asleep, and he doesn't let you fall asleep, and you're just like, "What the fuck?" You know. But that's that's why you got to go out there. You got to find out. Go find Miguel and hang out with him. You'll you'll get a taste of what I'm talking about. I hung out with Miguel for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. When we first met up in uh, Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. So yeah, fun times, man. Canada. So, what what other Canadian uh, reptile breeders you mess with other than Will Maros? What are what are some oh, other? I got, guys? Yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of uh, brothers up in Canada that mm -hmm. I work with. Yeah. So, Will Will's a crazy dude, man. Fun dude to party with. Yeah. Um. So definitely, definitely hang out with Will anytime. Yeah. Um. Khalil and his brother Sam five five fourteen reptile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and Mark Mandic have been friends for man forever. Um, that's my boy. I talk to Mark pretty much every day. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of cool cats. Um, 
up in Canada, Ken Gaberski, KGB, Reptiles. Um, yeah, a lot of good friends, man, up that way. Uh, NBK, Brian, my man Brian. Uh, always hang out with Brian whenever I get a chance to, you know. I'm right. supposed to be going to uh, Amsterdam next month for the King Day celebration. So assuming that the, assuming that the uh, celebrations don't get canceled, Cause, right? Because of the whole Corona crap. Damn Corona but, crap. Yeah, they they shut down the ham show. That was crazy. I you know that sucks. That was kind of last minute. But um, when was it was supposed to be last week? When was ham supposed to go down last week? Right? No, it was supposed to go down uh, next week, next weekend. Oh, but, damn. Um, it goes down the same time as Tinley. Yeah, it's the same time as Tinley. So that's why you know. Yeah. Yeah. If I could go to Ham, I, I mean, if you could go to, I mean, think about it. If you have the opportunity to go to Germany, where, I mean, I can only imagine what it's like at a reptile show in Germany. Why don't you tell us a little bit how that's like? What's a, what's a what's a European show compared to American show? Well, the the Ham show is crazy. It's unlike anything that I've been to before. It's it's packed. Um, there's a lot of crazy rules and restrictions. Like you can't take pictures. Yep. You, know, you take out your phone. They'll 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 mob you. They come out of nowhere too. And they're like, take, they take they're like, take your service. Yeah, they'll take your phone, um, dude. They they like you can't do like if they see you doing a transaction and you don't have a table. It's like, bro, it's it's stressful. You want to go to the bathroom? It takes like twenty minutes to to leave the table, walk to the bathroom, and come back. Um, wow, just because it's so crowded. But um, sounds bizarre. But but then. Then you have the Houghton Show um, or Snake Day, and it's that reminds me more of Tinley. It's more of a Tinley vibe, you know, carpet yeah. floors, you know, nice venue, you know, roomy. You could walk around. Um, that that feels more like a, a you know a U.S. show. So I guess it depends. You know, I'm gonna go to you to the U.K. I'm surprised the U.K. doesn't have a big show. Um, but they have a small show, so I, I'm going to try to get down to the UK this spring or summer. Uh, right. Hang out with Gavin, those dudes. Uh, I to say, who's your UK dudes? Who do you mess with the UK? And yeah, so John, John Kennedy, Gavin. I mean, uh, you know, Tony. There, there's a few. There's a few cats that I know over there. So um, you know, uh, like going to London. That's fun. Um, you know. <laughs> And, and when you go to Europe, you can pretty much drive. I used to fly into London. I used to fly into Heathrow. Um, and uh, my buddy used to, Chris Woodage, he used to uh, clear my shipments for me. He had a little coffee shop, Yeah. Um, you know, in the English countryside. And, and then I would take the rest and I would drive over through the channel, drive over into France. Um, and then from France, you drive into Bel Belgium, Holland, or whatever. Go do your deliveries. You could drive into Germany, make your deliveries, and um, yeah, and come home. So that that used to be an adventure because the steering wheel was on the wrong side. Yeah, right. That's awkward. <laughs> That's super awkward. That's yeah. sketch. I mean, I think driving sketch already. Imagine being on the opposite side. You turn. Yeah weird you know what i mean you're literally on the opposite side of the road i don't even know man that would, that would give me too much anxiety it's it's crazy because i used to i used to rent a car in england so you know i had i have to drive on the other side of the road so you got to really focus and then when i cross over into france france they drive on the same side of the road as we do but the steering wheel was still on the right side so it was tricky man it was tricky but yeah, but it was an adventure, man. Good times. So before we leave the whole good times, let's talk about your, your trips to Amsterdam. How many times you've been to Amsterdam? I've been to Amsterdam a few times now. Um, and you know, Sander from Dutch Dragon Imports. D Dutch Dragon Imports is based in Amsterdam. Nice. So, you know, it, it's one thing to go visit a place, but when you visit a place and you know somebody who lives in that place, it's a completely different experience. You know that. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, hundred so, percent. Like if I come to the West Coast by myself, you know, I'm I'm going to be doing a tourist thing. But if I come to the West Coast and visit you, 
you know, then you could take me down to Tijuana, you know, all of the good food spots. So it's just a, it's a completely different experience. So um, it's easier. love hanging out with Sander. Um, Sander's, Sander is the way you describe Miguel. That's Sander. He's like the Energizer Bunny. Dude, he'll party all weekend. Like, oh, yeah, he's in there, yeah, damn, bro. Yeah, that's, like, yeah. that's, that's like living in Vegas. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, you're, you're obviously, you for something. You know what I mean? But uh, I can only imagine. But having a plug in Amsterdam? Yeah. Amsterdam Amsterdam is crazy, man, because when you go there, like you're hanging out at a, at a bar or a club or whatever, you meet people yeah. from all over the world. You know, you'll be talking to people. You know, there'll be people from Dubai, people from Argentina, South Africa. Just yeah. like people from all over the world, and it's just a different vibe, man. It's it's a uh, it's a crazy place. You should try to come, man. I'm down, man. I need. A, yeah. I, got, I I got my uh, my passport needs some stamps, bro, for sure. Um, yeah. I need it especially because me and my wife wants to have kids, you know, at some point. But we want to do some traveling, so we want to hit it up, man. Europe, Europe is. Uh, if you could do it, do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's a, it's some it's something you'll never forget from what I've heard and yeah Europe uh, Europe Europe is fascinating man the history there is uh, it's pretty yeah cool. yeah I'm half Italian so I want to I actually want to go to yeah, Italy. Italy yeah Italy Italy is beautiful it's got the I history want- and uh, and you know it's just it's a beautiful country beautiful country indeed Verona um, man the Verona show let's go where's uh where's Verona at? So Italy? There, yeah, there's a show. There's a show in Verona. It's near Venice. Um, so, so Billy from Mutation Creation, he went, um, and and a few guys from Europe, they go to that show. But that show is growing. Um, Robbie and Giuseppe are the show promoters, um, and I hear a lot of good things about that show. And you know, it's in Italy, so I'm gonna try to get to that show at some point. Um, that should be a good time. Man, it sounds like an epic time going to a show with Ozzy. Just think about it, and going to Europe. Fuck, dude! Now you're, now you're trying to make me think how that's possible. <laughs> it's possible, man. It's definitely possible. Um, I want to talk about something that you know. I think a lot of people will probably have interest in on how you would like. You know, I know everything hasn't been freaking peaches and cream throughout this whole experience of you having your brand and everything like that. At some point, have you ever hit a freaking wall? Did you ever hit a struggle point where you were just, you know, hard to get up type of thing? And, uh, you know, you plowed your way through it. Anything like like any kind of share like that? I know there's a lot of people out there who hit walls. I still hit my walls. And it's hard to get up. People, there might be somebody listening who needs to pick me up right now. So, A, what what did you do to overcome that? And, B, what, do, what, is, your, what is your advice for somebody who's going through some shit right now but is all about the game and want to keep going? So you got to focus on solutions. You can't focus on a problem. Um, you're going you're gonna to hit problems. I, I, you know, I had a lot of situations where um, I had to, I had to make a lot of sacrifices to keep my collection. I was in New Jersey, bought a house in Pennsylvania. Um, I was there maybe I don't know, like four or five months. And my girl got pregnant with my first kid. So I kind of had to, I had to uproot myself, move out of the house that I just bought, move back to Maryland so that I could be there when my daughter was born. Um, then I had to find a place to rent for my snakes because um, I didn't have a place. I didn't have a house. You know, I just bought this house and I didn't have a house to move my snakes. So I had to rent this place in Baltimore. And I was living in Frederick, like 50 miles away. Um, so I had my snakes like in this, it, it was like an office building. It was like a storage, a storage room in the bottom of an office building. And the landlord at the time, he was crazy cool, the Italian dude. And he was he was crazy cool. He was cool with the snakes or whatever. But while I was there, he sold the building. And then the new landlords. They were not cool with the snakes. So I was in a situation where I was looking at potentially getting rid of my snakes. Um, And I, you know, I basically went to these guys and I just pleaded with them. And um, they told me I had to get rid of my boas. They said, you can keep the small ones, but you got to get rid of the big ones. So it was at that time I had to get rid of my boa collection. Um, So it was hard, man. I was working full time. I would I would go to work. 
I would get off of work because I was working in Baltimore. I would drive to the facility, work to like 9 p.m. at night, and then drive home, get home at like, you know, quarter to 10. Um, so it was a struggle. And um, then my daughter was born, you know, newborn baby, same thing. Like it, it was no joke. So um, again, are you willing to are you willing to make sacrifices? Are you willing to focus on trying to find a solution yep. and um, do what you got to do to keep it moving forward? Um, I'm glad I did. So worth it. Uh, yeah, you know, literally has changed my life and you know put me in a position where you know I could provide for my family and you know leave a legacy behind when I do pass. So you know, yeah, man, that's what it's all about. And not only that, no, you're just leaving so much motivation for people who are coming into this hobby, people who've been following in this hobby. So as much as Ozzy's not as active on social media, just the stuff he posts and the people we've been following him is enough inspiration for people to be wanting to fuck with Ozzy, man. Uh, so, like, look, at the end of the day, if you're not all about putting yourself out there, you don't really want to be known to be putting it out there. You don't have to be active on social media. It's It's to each their own, man. You don't, you know, just because a lot of people are doing it. It doesn't necessarily mean it comes with snake breeding, okay? Yep. It's really it's really up to you uh, because Ozzy's not the only one. Um, uh, who else is out there? Okay, Mershon. Mershon Morphs. You know Mershon? Uh, Shelby? Yeah, I know Shelby. Me, me and Shelby go way back, man. I, I, Shelby. I know Shelby, like, Shelby was in the hobby, then he got out, and he got back in. But I you know, I remember Shelby from way back. Um, I mean, he used to come to Hamburg. In Shelby. Shelby is another individual who, I mean, from what I understand, he lets his post do all the talking for him, man. Like the stuff that he's posting, it's like, man, like that's what got my attention to wanting to follow him. I didn't get his, I didn't get his attention from a YouTube tag or, a, you know, a, some sort of collab that I saw. It was just based off the stuff he was posting. It was that there, impact. There, there, so There's so many guys that people don't know that produce like some really, really nice stuff. There's a lot of low key guys. Um, that produce a lot, a lot of really nice stuff. They keep what they want and they wholesale, get rid of the rest. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could approach it. Um, yeah. Again, you gotta, you know, can't you can't, you know, come into the hobby and 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 say you're gonna be like this person or that person. You have to be yourself. Um, say, stay true to yourself. Do you, you know? And if you're passionate. And you, you know, you put in the time, um, it's going to pay off, you know, as long as you're smart with what you're breeding, what you're producing, you know, it'll pay off big dividends. You know what I mean? If I was, if I was charming and, and, uh, handsome, like, you know, Jordan and Miguel and those guys, you know, maybe I'll be out there, put myself out there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did Jordan pay? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I want to know what the cut was. I want to know what the cut was for Jordan to pay you to say he was handsome or good looking. <laughs> That, I know that fool's sitting on some good coin right now. So <laughs> he probably he probably gave you some sick some sick some sick ass snake. I'm I'm just get, I'm just Jordan, money. Jordan ain't that bad looking. He yeah. all right. Um, you want to talk about good looking people? Yeah. Five one four reptiles is in the house. Yeah, you know, another another Canadian homie. Um, yeah. Yep. What's up, He's, bro? Yeah. You know. he, uh, he was so 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 that um. That emoji, that emoji that um, you you put in a, a post, uh, yeah, my man Cedric, um, up in Canada, uh -huh. he, um, he's setting up this website with all these snake breeders, and he's and he's we're gonna be selling T-shirts on that um, on that website. It's kind of like with that, with that emoji, yeah, with all of the emojis. Have you seen the one? Have you seen like Will's emoji and I think Brit I have it. Um, Brian Cusco's doing it. I, it so that, there, there's a bunch of guys that are doing it, and they're just making these funny emojis, um, and they're gonna be putting them on T-shirts. So Khalil, Khalil was clowning me because he told me I sent him the emoji, and he was hey. <laughs> like, he was like, "Dude, why do you look white?" And then I got a, I got another guy that was um, that was texting me, and he was like, "Dude, are you in the Peach Project?" I'm like, what are you talking about? So he didn't realize that that was an orange. He thought it was a peach. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's like, my, he's like, I just bought all this orange dream shit. Now you're a fucking peach guy. <laughs> yeah, he was like, dude, nah. He was saying he was like, dude, I'm in a peach project too. 
Oh, damn. Like, what are you, you know, I'm like, what are you talking about? Peach Project. You know, I know Justin's got that peach gene. So I think that's what he, when I posted that, I, I, I guess he assumed that I was getting into the Peach Project or I was thinking about getting into the Peach Project. But um, I just, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty I, interesting. I'm going to go back and look at that and see if I even see anything resembling a peach. I knew right away it was an orange when I looked at it, but. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Every, everyone sees things differently. You feel me? No doubt. Um, so Texas, right? Have you ever been to Arlington show before? Nah, never, man. I got to get out. I got to get out to Texas. I have a lot of peeps out in Texas, um, you know, rocking my, rocking my uh, rep, rep the chip, rep the yeah. chip. Yeah, no chip. doubt. But those, guys, those guys have always showed me a lot of support, a lot of love over the years. So I got to get out there and hang out with them. JT, Mike Breezy and all of them. Um, yeah, I got to get out to that show. Uh, do you put rep to chip? Do, do all your snakes uh, do all your snakes go on rep to chip or only the ball pythons? What do you what oh, do you I, do with the rep I, <laughs> I, so I'm rock I'm rocking the rep to chip, but I use cypress mulch, man. I've been I've been using uh 100 percent pure cypress mulch from day one. And it's just been, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of set in my ways, but I feel if, you. if I ever get in a situation, so cypress mulch is very difficult to source. Um but I, I actually have it milled. Um, I have it milled just for myself um, and I order it. You know, I used to sell it when I had to shop, but uh, now I basically get it uh, milled for myself and I, I use Cypress mulch. But if I if I have a problem with sourcing Cypress mulch, I'm going to I'll definitely. Yeah, I would definitely move to the coconut. Uh, so. So, and I love JT, man. JT, I've known JT for a while. Right. Um, you know, just just a classy dude, man. You know, so no doubt. Yeah, Texans, no joke, man. I I fuck with Texas tough, and I want to go out I've, there. I've never uh, been to Texas, man. I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I gotta go visit. Well, if you have, look, listen. At the end of the day, if you know good food, Ozzy, you're about you. You will have the best barbecue you've ever had in your entire life, bro. Yeah, I've, I like yeah. I've always fucked barbecue and i'm a i'm a beef person i like brisket i like beef ribs right uh i don't understand people who order pork ribs over beef hey to each their own but i will go oh. beef over all day i for me personally i don't know why i just like that i like to blow your mind with this but some of the best uh spare ribs you'll you'll find is actually in amsterdam really yeah there's a spot in amsterdam that sander takes us to that's just off the charts and Damn. i i didn't even know they know how to barbecue but apparently they do. Um, but yeah, I, I got to get out to Texas. Um, yeah. Darren Jacobs promised me a big steak, big bone and ribeye. So, yeah. What do you think about Miguel and the, his group of homies who took it to another level and rode a bull? Would you ever consider riding a, one of the big ass bulls they got in Texas? I go bull club once, but that's about it. I'm, I'm too old for that shit. That's, <laughs> I'm going to have to give it to Miguel on them, man, because listen, I've had a lot of injuries in my time and I know damn well, yeah. you get on a bull that fucking big, anything can happen, bro. And if, it, if, yeah. you, if you look at it real carefully, it almost like, so Miguel fall off right away. Okay. I'm not trying to roast you, Miguel, but he fell off like instantly, but he hit the ground so freaking hard. Okay. That he cracked yeah. ribs. Bro, like he fell. He cracked like, ribs. He, uh, he flossed it. He flossed the uh, the X ray on his YouTube channel. And honestly, I was kind of like, oh, did Miguel really break his ribs? Because you know what I mean. Like he's he's not as bad at thumbnails as Brian Cusco, but his thumbnails kind of go out there, right? But what I'm trying to say is, I was like, yo, did Miguel really hurt himself? Did he really break his ribs? Sure enough, the dude broke his ribs. And dude, it could have been, been way worse. worse. It could have been way worse. Oh. These guys grind hard for followers, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bro, they are they are dog. They are all the way do or die on their YouTube. They're hardcore, man. Hardcore. Oh, oh my Lanta, man. And then I think the one who rode the bull the best was little Harrison. You know who Harrison is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Little yeah. Royal Camp dude. He so I guess apparently he rode the bull better than all the other motherfuckers did, and he's the tiniest. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, you can't fuck with him, bro. Little soldier. Shout yeah. out to Shout out, right. to Shout out to Royal Canvas Exotics, man. Everyone who rode the bull. Yeah. 
look, I ain't gonna catch me on no damn bull. I don't give a fuck. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to, A, I'm not doing this for followers, even though I would use, I'd be down for some, don't get me wrong, but I'm not trying to fucking be on a bull and then end this. Yeah. I'll drive you guys to the emergency room. <laughs> yeah. And then we could doc, and then we, then you could document that. Oh man. It's almost yeah. like the worst thing that ha- if the worst thing that happens to you is the more followers you get. It just depends how hurt you get. Yeah. I'll, get it's- some publi- I'll get some publicity. I'll be filming it. Fuck yeah, man. Um, you ever you ever been to the Pacific Northwest, like Seattle, Washington, that area? Nope. Yeah, fur- furthest, uh, closest that I've been is up up towards uh, Napa Valley, um, Yosemite. That was the furthest north that I've been on the West Coast. Yeah. So as far as West Coast, right? You're a fucking Oakland Raider fan. I feel like that's one. Well, Las Vegas now, unfortunately, right? But one of the biggest things I feel like I was able to kind of get Ozzy's attention somehow. I would fucking rep Oakland Raiders almost on all his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All his own Raiders, you know what I mean? All day. We did have a Patriots fan in the comments, but he's gone because I said fuck the Patriots, and he just dipped out. So we don't have to worry about that. But, but Brady, 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 Brady is coming to to the Raiders. Why, so, why I can't wait. I'll take Brady all day, but I'm still not fucking with the Patriots. I don't care. Yeah. Once you wear Ra- once you wear a Raider jersey, you are family. You are in. It, it, it is. Yeah, no doubt. But how how funny would that be? Out of the, I mean, think about what quarterback we almost hate the most because of what the fucking it was a fumble. You know what I mean? Remember the fucking uh, Patriots Raiders playoffs? The winner would go to the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah. that fumble. So that always sits sour in her stomach since 2002. I still remember when Sarah Goose uh, belly flopped on top of Gannon. That you remember that against the Ravens? Say that one more time. They, oh yes, oh, yes. <laughs> dude. I hated that dude. I hated oh, that guy. For that. I, I just knew we were going to Super Bowl that year. What a piece of work for doing that, bro. My I remember my, my dad was he was pretty pissed when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he literally, it was, like, it was like a WWF, like a straight summer, like, you know, yep. boom. And that's a big dude. He's a big dude, bro. So, man. Anyway, shout out to the Raiders. Uh, me and Ozzy are going to try to go to a Las Vegas Raider game here pretty soon. Um, no which actually, I got access to tickets. So, check this out. The guy, my physical therapist, bought season tickets, no. uh, but just to sell. Like, only just to sell. Like, he's not oh, even really? going to get it. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, yo, let me know what game you want to go to. He has three tickets. So, um, it is a possibility we could go to a Las Vegas Raider game this year, okay. bro. So, yeah, I'm I'm in. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh. So, yeah. We'll, right, before we get, we'll get tickets one way or the other. Either way, we'll make it happen, bro. Um, and if it's Vegas, you know we'll have to invite Miguel. Miguel has all the Vegas plugs, bro. His, so. brother, his brother is a Raider fan. So Yeah, his brother is a Raider fan. And I don't think Miguel watches uh, football. He's more of a soccer fan. Um, oh no! Wait, wait, wait! He's a Dallas Cowgirl fan. My bad. Oh, oh man, my fault. I forgot. He likes JV football. I totally forgot. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, shit. I was gonna ask you. I was gonna ask you something. My fucking mind just went blank right now after roasting Miguel's team. Um, so real quick, who is who's somebody that you're? You know, somebody not somebody you came up in the game with, right? But you know, a lot of people come and go, right? Um, how many? How big's your circle now, man? Who are people that you still talk to? Some people you even you even share projects with, maybe collab with. Do you do any of that kind of stuff? Or I mean, like who? You know what I mean? People you you tell your ingredients to, something like that, like a, a right hand homie. I, you trust? Yeah, I, I I I I'll talk to anybody about my projects. I mean, I'm not. I don't do top secret. Um, I just you know. I, I just I got so much going on. It, it really doesn't matter. You know, I may tell you one project, you know, and, you know, you could get on board and try to, you know, try to chase that project, too. But I have so many projects going on. I'm really not top secret, man. I, I'm, I'm not really competing with anybody. I'm just trying to trying to challenge myself and always trying to push myself to um, take it to the next level and stay consistent. And again, yeah. I'm having a blast, man. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't do top secret. But I talk, like I said, I talk to Mark Mandic pretty much every day. You know, I talk to some of the other cats up in Canada. Um, you know about the projects. Me and Will actually talk about a lot of projects. Um, we're working on some uh, similar projects. 
We have, he has that chaos gene. I think I may have that gene too. So we kind of, we kind of, um, you know, share information on that project. And we're also gonna, also gonna swap out some animals too, um, just to, you know, collaborate on that project. But, you know, I, I stay in touch with Justin, you know, me and Justin talk from time to time. Um, you know, I like to get, you know, uh, feedback from him sometimes on certain projects right. uh, and vice versa. Uh, you know, I buy stuff from him. He buys stuff from me. Uh, so yeah, man, it's, uh, I, I, I've helped out a lot of guys in the industry over the years. Um, you know, some are appreciative, some are, you know, some are kind of shady, um, you know, but it's all good. I'll help out anybody. Um, yeah, it just comes you know, with it. Right. Yeah. So what are, you, what are you gonna do? It's it's about what you do with it. You know, you don't have to, you know, you could easily weed out people that have no effect on what you're trying to do or if they're trying to hold you back, you know. Yeah. I talked to Dan, I talked to Daniel from Constriction Addiction time to time. Yeah, you know, sick. LV, um, you know, any of those cats, man, they you know, they may reach out to me. Um, you know, uh, so it's all good, you know. I want to touch up on this real quick, just because I just want to have your insight on it. Um, you brought up Justin. I'm not going to get into detail, but I've been following Justin for quite a while. You know, since I started, you, 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 I'd be considering somebody who you who I, like how you are to me. I see Justin. And then recently, um, about a month or so, I felt like he was getting some static, man, and from like a well-known breeder too. Like this wasn't a noob or anything, but yeah, I'm not going to say the names. But this dude was giving him heat. Because the way he was pricing certain morphs, <laughs> like, and like I'm talking about, like you could tell this guy was really in his feelings, and it's something that threw me off because I didn't think this guy had feelings like that. And all of a sudden, he's all up in his feelings and making crazy posts. But like, I mean, is that really something? I mean, what's your input on that? I mean, is that something someone should get upset about? Or I mean, what's what do you think? I've seen it all over the years, man. I, you know, I've seen it all. And I, you know, it, you see people price stuff, you know, and it, you know, like if you're selling, you're selling snakes for $2,500 and, you know, and they're selling pretty good at $2,500. And then you see somebody post it for seven or $800. It kind of pisses you off. But I, you know, I don't think it's ever good to go public um, with, you know, with stuff like that. I just, you know, I don't think any good comes from it. Um, right. As far as Justin goes, um, Justin's producing a lot of stuff, he's producing a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah. I would imagine that he's going to try to get top dollar for his uh, his his um, product. Um, it's not easy. I know from personal experience when you're trying to price stuff, it's a little tricky trying to figure out where to price something. Um, so... You know, it's, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate when that happens, um, you know, sometimes you price something a certain way and people are, they disagree with the price is too low, it's too high, whatever. Um, that's just, you know, it's part of the game. There, there's no, there's no specific rule book um, that you can follow, you know. You just have to make a judgment call. You go in morph market, try to yeah. figure out what it's selling for, and then you price it accordingly. I think the last thing you should do is take things personal too. You know what I mean? It's, What's that? It's some, I think I think the last thing anybody should do when some somebody who has to price something that isn't what you want it to be, I don't think you should take it personally. You know what I mean? Well, you know, some people some people will shit on a project deliberately. Like I said, I've seen it all over the years, man. Some some people some people do it, you know, with the deliberate intent of hurting a project. Um, so you know, people may catch feelings or whatever. Um, one way that I've dealt with it um, is I just always try to stay cutting edge, you know. But what pisses me off is if I'm selling to my customers. I'm selling them stuff for twenty five hundred dollars, you know, and they want to raise it up and they want to try to see a return on their investment. Mm. Somebody is shitting on a project, you know, and yeah. bought it out at you know seven eight hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever. It's kind of shitty. It's it's 
And you're also hurting yourself, you know, more than you're hurting anybody else by giving away your product. Um, some guys, a lot of guys have come into this game and they think they're just going to produce a bunch of stuff. They're going to sell it for cheap and they're just going to blow it out fast and make a lot of money. But, you know, if you don't have adequate profit margins um, for every animal you sell, you won't survive. I mean, it's just not sustainable. Facts. Um, so it's better it's better to produce a smaller number of animals and focus on selling higher end animals. You know, more like a boutique breeder where your profit margins are much higher yeah. rather than producing you know a thousand animals and blowing them out for cheap. Me personally, I think that's not a sustainable business model mm -mm. in this game. And, you know, a lot of guys have tried it over the years. They usually come, they do some damage, but after two or three years, they're gone. Yep, so, they're yeah. So, yeah, it is. It is what it is, man. You know, you just got to you got to go with the flow. You got to adapt. You know, if if you don't want to you don't want somebody else to dictate the price of the stuff that you're producing, try to produce stuff that nobody else has. Yeah, it's fucking. I mean, I don't think there's no better way to say it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? much. It's just what Ozzy's trying to say. If you're in here to do mass production to sell for cheap, just understand what your future is going to look like. You know, you know what I mean. More likely, even if you last longer than three years, you're probably gonna have a miserable three years. I don't think you're really going to be enjoying it. Um, so start. But, with, you know, the, the other thing too is you know you don't know what. You know, you don't know what a person's personal situation is. Maybe they have an emergency. I don't yeah. know. You know, so who knows? Somebody, you know, pricing something. I don't take it personal. The only time I really take it personal is if, if you know, I get a sense that some of these cats are just doing it deliberate, deliberately because they don't like this person or they don't like that person. They're pretty much shitting on a hobby. Um, and then, yep. kind of, I kind of take that personal. You know, but you'll never, you'll never see me. Um, you never see me uh, publicly attacking people, though. So I just try to keep it classy. I think you're right because the ones who are out there trying to, you know, demolish and you know deteriorate things, they make it obvious. Like you could tell this person has no good intent of, you know, making a name last longer than you know whatever they're trying to make it last for. So, and that's a good thing about nowadays, man. These motherfuckers are so easy to pin out and be like, look, that's obviously somebody who's obviously I don't want to follow and probably I'm going to block. You know what I mean? It's and that goes down to like, if not, if you don't like, if you see something you don't like seeing fucking block the person gone, done. And then you, go on, you go on with your day. You don't have to worry about, you know, even having something that, you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, all right, Ozzy, I got one, I got, I got a hot, I got some hot seat questions for you, but before we get into there, I got one more question. I want to know on the business side of things, uh, you have a rap, you have a rodent business. Is that right? Yeah, I started um, I started a rodent uh, business, and I just uh, I just acquired a second facility. Whoa! Right next door to the first one, so um, working Damn. on uh, working on getting that place up and running. Um, again, rodent itself completely separate from the snakes because there's shortages everywhere, um, all across the country. Uh, up yeah. in Canada, you know, there, there's there's ball python breeders who are paying four dollars for you know a crawler yeah. rat. Yeah, nuts. It, it, it's a huge business opportunity. So I've been I've been kind of experimenting, playing around with it, trying yeah. to find a business model that would work, and a business model that can be replicated across the country. Um, I would love to put 20, 30, 40 facilities up, um, and and. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set up the facilities and then find owner operators. So I don't want employees. Um, I do I do want real estate and I wouldn't mind trying to solve the rodent problem um, or helping to alleviate the rodent problem because I think by doing so, you know, you'll help you'll help the industry and the hobby grow even faster than what it is growing now. Because I think a lot of guys who have ball python collections, I think they're one, one of the uh, things that limits the size of their collection is reliable um, uh, source of healthy, uh, reasonably priced rodents. So, um, so yeah, pl playing around with that, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out a business model where I could 
set up a facility, put in all of the cages, all of the ventilation, you know, slob things, emergency generator, all of that, and then just find people who want to breed rodents and start a rodent breeding business and uh, just rent the facility to them and let them do their own thing. Give them guidance on how to set up their business entity. Um, give them a breeding plan, step-by-step -step breeding plan that they could follow and be able to tell them with, with this number of cages, following this breeding plan, here's what your expected expenses are going to be. And this is what you could expect to produce. And based on current market prices, this is what you can expect to make a year if you stay on top of your animals and, you know, follow this recipe. So if I could do that and purchase real estate across the country and then find people to rent that and, you know, they can have their own business and maybe make six figures um, doing rodents. Bro. I mean, it would be win, 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 win all around. Um, let's talk about the West Coast chapter real quick. I want to, I want to, yeah. let's talk. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of cats out there. There's a lot of people who are willing to, you know, work hard, have a, a entrepreneurial spirit. There's a lot of people in this hobby that, that, you know, are entrepreneurial. So I think, I think that's one way of potentially solving an issue um, and growing a hobby, you know? And, right. And again, at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm big into building my real estate portfolio. Uh, I'm big on a passive income. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what I'm doing now. And I'm, I'm experimenting with it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, um, exactly how much it'll cost to produce, you know, a rodent. And, you know, once you have those numbers, then you could uh, you can set up facilities and you could you know you could find owner operators and give them some realistic numbers to work with you know they could even take that data and go to a bank you know right. and get business right. loans or whatever so damn that's just you just dropped a lot like that's pretty groundbreaking right there bro I'm not even gonna lie wasn't expecting all that you know what I mean but if that were to come into play that's gonna change the game for fucking everything when it comes to feeding snakes bro it really is. Yeah. And even if you, even if you, you know, I started doing it just because the entire time that I've been in a hobby, you know, I, I, I've struggled with finding a consistent, reliable supply of rodents. And with ball pythons, if you don't, if you're not feeding your females, they're not going to lay eggs for you. So, um, you know, you, you have to have a, a steady, reliable source of healthy rodents to um, operate your business and, and to be successful. So, Again, yeah. that's why I kind of set up the feeder business. Um, I recognize the problem. Everybody I talk to, you know, we, we, we turn away so many customers, so many guys. A lot of you guys contacted me to buy rodents and we just can't keep up. We can't keep up with the demand. We have to turn people away every day for rats, ASFs, frozen, live, no matter what it is. Damn. keep up we can't keep up so so we're expanding we're trying to we're trying to um alleviate the demand in our local region but yeah there's a bigger demand um and the only way that we could really uh satisfy that demand i think is by taking the approach that i was just talking about you know and i should not openly share that approach with any anybody who has a little money can set up a facility and rent right. a facility and get a nice return on their investment and find some owner operators who can come in, start a rodent breeding business and make six figures a year being self-employed. Yeah. I mean, how many people out there right now hate their jobs making, you know, 40, $35,000 a year or whatever. I still hate it. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you could be self-employed, you know, and I'm talking about like a one, like a one full time, one part time, employee type operation, you know, generate about 150 K, uh, in sales a year. Yeah. You know, I mean? that just sounds so legit right there. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely an opportunity for anybody who figures out, uh, I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of guys who, who did really, really well with, um, rodents, you know, Forrest and, uh, Mark Bailey and, you know, um, yeah. 
gourmet rodent. What's 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 uh damn can't believe I'm uh uh Bill Bill uh Bill Bryant. Yeah, for oh the the guy oh the guy who does uh gourmet rodent. Who used to own gourmet rodent, he sold it. Yeah, he was good well, homies of versus yeah. yeah, Bill. Yeah, he 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 was very bright, uh very sharp guy. Um but yeah, you could do really, really well with rodents. I mean, it's 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 uh you gotta stay on top of the animals. Um, you know, the profit margins aren't huge, but you know, whatever you produce, you're gonna be able to sell. Even ARS, ARS started out doing rodents. Uh, right. you know, so Freedom Breeder, they used to do rodents, I believe, back in the day. I think that's how they got into the cage building uh business. So that's some heavy. I mean, to to kind of wrap up what we're doing here and to hear that, I think that was probably one of the most. We've been hearing sick shit all night, uh, Ozzy. But that right there, I think that's kind of leaving an impact. Everyone's going nut ape shit in the uh, in the comments about it. I think Harrison wants to get signed up. <laughs> and, and here's here's the thing: if you if you have like a ball python collection or whatever, and you already have that business, and then you set up the feeder business, the the benefit where the profit margins are really going to be in your snake production, you know, get in your ball pythons to breed a year or two years earlier than they normally would, because you have a reliable source and a steady source of rats is going to generate a lot more profit than what you would make with the rats. You know what I mean? So for me, I could break even with my rodent business. I don't have to make a penny. I could even lose some money, but by having uh, uh, having access to those rodents, my snake collection is going to boom. My production is going to be a lot higher. Um, you know, my my success rate, my clutch sizes. You know, so the real uh, you know benefit for me financially is going to be with my snakes. So again, if somebody you know. If somebody takes one of those facilities and rent one of those facilities uh, and, you know, have a yeah. rodent business on the side on top of their snake business and maybe they have their full time job, too. I mean, you can do really, really well. There you go, man. That's like, free knowledge. You can be, right like, there. You can be like Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know, man. Miguel. <laughs> Miguel's kind of his own dude. You could try to be like Miguel, but it's got the low rider, low rider, fucking yeah. Chevy, fucking dude. No, oh, man, I can't even explain. But uh, that's that's some sick ass knowledge right there. Hope you guys are all stoked to hear what not, uh, Oz just dropped for you. Definitely some exclusive stuff. Um, so I'm stoked on that, man. I got some hot seat questions to wrap everything up. What do you think about that, Oz? You cool with that? Yep. Yep. All right. So this is just like a preferred. Like, what would you? What like? What route would you take? type of thing and then we'll get into some word association okay so you ready yep all right so frozen thought or live live a cutter or no cut i cut we got okay he cuts he said cut uh you a big flex all right so hang on a second if i had if i had 10 snakes i'd probably do frozen thought with my collection i'm gonna do live as far as egg cutting go, I cut after the first snake pips or if it exceeds 60 days. So I'm not one of those cats that are cutting at 45 days, you know, um, creating a bloody mess because I can't wait or I'm impatient. Um, so when the first snake pips, I cut the rest of the eggs because sometimes a snake, um, for whatever reason, I've, I've had hatchlings that didn't even have an egg tube. So if they can cut out of the egg, they can suffocate and die inside of the egg. So that's why after the first snake pips, I just, I cut the rest of the eggs. Um, or if it's like, you know, 62 days and I'm not seeing anybody pip, you know, or 60 days, I'll, I'll cut the eggs. But I'm not a big fan of cutting real early. So there so. it is. He cuts, he cuts as appropriately when he needs to. Yeah. All right. Big flexing or no flexing? Flexing? I'm not. What do you mean? Flexing, bro. You a flexor or not flexor? Do you flex or not? Flex in what way? <laughs> like how so? I mean, what? I mean, basically, you're a flexor. Everything you're showing, like you know, it's like to show oh. off. What you're doing. 
Flexing. It's a term, you know, flexing. Oh, oh, so showing off, like showing off what you got. Like yeah. Flex. Right, what, right. As far as the animals go. Yeah. You know, I, I flex. I flex. <laughs> I flex all the time, but I don't I don't flex to 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 boast. Well, maybe sometimes. Maybe sometimes I'm boasting. But really, I I do post a lot of stuff because I I love to create excitement and I love to see the hobby grow. And if somebody's feeling discouraged or Maybe they're not so motivated. They're working on a project. They don't know how it's going to look. I like, I like getting people pumped up, creating some excitement. So that's what I'm all about. All right. That's facts right there. Flex. Flex. All, right. all right. All right. If you were to own a team, would it be a, would you own a baseball team or a football team? Football, bro. Right. Man, that will be the dream. That will be the dream. All right. I was just going to own a football team one day. Uh, all right, man. All right. So steak or calamari? Steak. 100%. Uh, Van, Han- Van Halen or Sammy Hagar? Who? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were going to do me like JP I'm, did. I'm just with you. Sammy Hagar, man. <laughs> okay, all, right. all right. Here's here's an important one, man. You're from New York. All right. Jay-Z or Nas? Jay-Z. Ooh, I, talk- I love Nas, man. But we'll talk Jay-Z. later. Hey, hey, prolific with it, man. I, you know that- do you remember that pay per view pay per view event where they were where they're supposed to freestyle each other? Like this is like two thousand one or two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. He got murdered. Jay Z murdered him, by the way. Yeah, That's yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Anyways, I don't want to talk about it. All right, so um, West Coast rap or East Coast rap? I think you know. I know what you're gonna say, uh, bro. I'm 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 from Brooklyn, so you know. But I it's you, you know what, man? It's hard. It's, it's hard, man. One of my favorite albums is. Uh, Chronic 2000, you know, that Ooh, that was legendary. Bro. Yeah. Every, song, every song on that album is a yeah. hit. It's still a hit. Yeah. And when I was DJing, bro, anytime I would drop any song on that album, it created heads. It was like, what? Like, it's so that very true right there, what you just said. Yeah. So, uh, all right. All right. So, let's do a little word association. First thing to come to mind when I say this word, okay? Milk, Oreos, Coco. Puffs. Damn. Stuck shed. <laughs> Stuck shed. <laughs> God damn. I don't know what comes to mind with that, man. Soak. <laughs> <laughs> Cypress. Cypress mulch. Cypress <laughs> mulch. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, Instagram trolls. Block. All right, Instagram or Facebook? I like IG. All day. I feel like IG is the more positive route. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, there's some, you know, honestly, the more, uh, I feel like the more OGs established people in the reptile hobby are more on Facebook. But for people who want to kind of get out there, meet people and ready, ready, really get their stuff noticed, I think Instagram is the way to go, 100%. I don't like all of the drama, man. All of the politics and the. Yeah, it's heavy. It's the. Yeah, all of the hate and all that shit on Facebook. I just, I don't do it, man. It's, there's a lot of negativity on Facebook. You know, sharing photos, you know, cool animals or whatever, you know, pretty women, whatever. Right. Um, so for me, it's more positive. 100%. Now we're going to sign off, Ozzy, but before we sign off, what do you have to say to all your followers, all your supporters? All the people, I mean, I don't know if you have haters, but if you aren't doing something right, then you, you know, you, you I, there has to be haters out there. But so, everyone who fucks with you, everyone who follows you, what do you got to say yeah, to them, man? Yeah, honestly, heart, thank you. I appreciate all of the support over the years. Um, Ozzy Boyd's would not be possible if it wasn't for you guys um, that, you know, post encouraging comments, uh, buy animals from me, or, you know, or inspire me too, you know. Guys like P. Call and Kevin and all those guys. If it wasn't for you guys, I probably would have never got into the hobby. So again, Reptile Nation, nothing but love. Um, I respect this hobby, love the community. Um, you know, keep it positive and uh, do your thing. There it is from the fucking from the man himself, Ozzy fucking Boyd's. I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate you. Yep. I appreciate you messing with me, man, and giving me your time of day. I could tell you right now, bro. Or you're killing it, bro. You've been killing it, and you're you're like a silent assassin. But you know your work's not silent. It's out there, bro. It's loud as fuck, and uh, 
You got everyone backing you up, bro. I'm telling you right now, every, a lot of people are team Aussie, bro. And you're, you're killing it, man. Yeah. So keep Pre- doing it, man. Pre- appreciate that. Appreciate the love. And I'm, I'm going to come out to the West coast, man. We got to hang out. Dog, I got you, bro. Just yeah. give me all I need is one full day and half of a night. And we will all cover, right. we will cover most of everything. And we'll have a lot to talk about after that, bro. But you have a wonderful Thank night, you. man. We'll be in touch. Ozzy. Ladies and gentlemen, Ozzy points. Take care, everybody. All right. all right, I'll see you. Holy shit. Fucking Ozzy, man. Amazing. Amazing. Shout out to everyone who tuned in. Everyone in the comments. You guys were great. I uh, appreciate everyone who uh, was a part of this. Before you leave, please don't forget to like or dislike. Do something. Don't just be a ghost watcher. Subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, man. Ozzy Boyd's, man. My mind's blown. Um, guys, just full of knowledge. His experience, you know, having to hear a story from how he came up out of New York, 21 years old with nothing. OK, the guy said he had freaking his clothes in a damn trash bag, man. Humble, humble as fuck. Probably one of the most humble guys I've ever met. And I think that's the uh, I think that's the key, man. Just be humble. That's why I love bringing these people on. You, I'm learning. I'm learning so much off each person I'm bringing on to the show because I want to be better so much. Like I'm all about becoming a better person, becoming a better breeder. Uh, you know, be- becoming a better person for the community, you know, trying to do what I can, man, because like I'm starting to learn, you know, how big and close everybody is. You know, I don't mind, I'm not going to end this on a sad note, but we all know who we lost recently. <laughs> we lost somebody so goddamn important to this community. And he was close to everybody. Um, he always gave a lot of people the time of day. A lot of you know who 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 you are that had a, some sort of relationship with force, but we're going to talk more on that. I just want to let you know, guys, life is short. Um, love everyone around you. You know what I mean? Don't worry about petty stuff. Just keep moving with your life. Find out what makes you happy and stick to that, man. But link to the description below for unfiltered reptiles podcast. Me and Steven will be back in the mix. He would want it that way. So we're not going anywhere, guys. Don't worry. Educational pieces still coming your way on the Unca- Un- <laughs> Unfiltered Reptiles podcast. And of course, we still got the trap sessions with MJ here. So, you know, more of the, uh, you know, real MJ type thing versus the educational version, even though there's no educational version of me. But anyways, guys, have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Next week is going to be dope. So don't forget, um, I'm bringing on 